Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Saints stream. We have an exciting one today. Three games on board. Rock, uh, R6, Call of Duty, and uh, Valorant. I'm your host, Theo, known as a Holy One. Today, I'm joined by Patrick. How are you feeling for this exciting game day? Well, I'm feeling really, really good. Obviously, you know, there's some massive stakes uh, here. I don't know if you can see, Theo, just behind you, there is a cherry blossom tree. So remember, guys, that there is a soccer anime event happening on the 13th of April. So be sure to get your tickets and show up then. But focusing back on to game day now, let's talk about some of the matches. And uh, we have a lot of R6, Call of Duty, Valorant, some playoff stakes, and possible Orlando appearances. Yeah, so first of all, we're going to have R6, our academy team, going up against a butler. That's going to be a very, very close series. We spoke about it a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, the records as well. You could see butler went a 7 as 1. A 7 and 1, our Saints went a 4 and 4, but still, they're going to be feeling confident going into this matchup. They did lose uh, to butler in the regular season, but now there's playoff time. Uh, this going to be their most important series of the of the season. Right, and I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we don't gotta mention the elephant in the room, but the point is that if St. Clair does beat Butler, uh, eliminating a team that is seven and one, they're gonna be looking pretty good for their other competition uh, because if you do see, JMU, the team that was in third, was eliminated 0-2 by KSU. So it is uh, going to be very interesting to see if the Saints can move on, just get over this hurdle, they will be going up against KSU, who they already was speaking with the team earlier. They feel very confident against in the semifinals. You got to think, you got to hope that maybe they could be Orlando bound. But you don't want to underestimate your opponents, obviously. So they're just, I'm sure, focusing on the matchup ahead as they should. Yeah, definitely. Butler, you know, second seed for a reason. Uh, maybe a bit of favorites going into this one on paper. But as you said, our Saints are feeling very, very confident about themselves. So it's going to be an exciting series uh, to say the least. And then after that, we have, I believe, a Call of Duty coming up and we're going to be playing against uh, Cumberland. That one's going to be for a land spot that is the semifinal. So that's going to be a very, very interesting matchup as well. Our Saints definitely playing uh, well this entire season. Kind of their only real uh, competition has been Northwood, who has been uh, <laughs> kind of beating them over and over. They had a game against Akron. It was a best of five and it went all five games, but our Saints did a great, a great job there. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's not really much to say about uh, the COD team. They are just so good. I mean, the lineup of Nacho, KB, Priestley, Brandon, uh, they've just been so consistent over this year. As you see, six and one, you got to hope that they get the job done here. One of the best collegiate teams in the entire scene, let alone Canada. And, uh, you know, you got to think that they are hopefully going to be uh, land bound as we get into that matchup there. But let's talk about some Valorant next, Theo. Yeah, we could talk about some. Uh, let's take a look at Cumberland real quick. They also went five and two. Oh, so right. Okay, of course. Very, yes, very, yes, yes. very, very, very strong uh, team. Nothing to look over, but uh, as uh, our Saints are definitely going to be the favorites going to this one and going to be expected to make it uh, to the Grand Finals. But now let's see, do we, have a we can take there. a look there at the go. bracket. It's going to be uh, OC Esports caught at the top and Akron. Uh, a lot uh, playing against them in that other semifinal, and the winner of this will be playing the winner of that one. You can see all teams had a very, very strong uh, showing in round of 8 3 0 basically all across the board. We saw how strong Akron were just a couple of days ago, taking our Saints to five games. They even were in match point for a couple of maps, but they've definitely turned it up in our so It's going to be a very, very interesting semifinals and then finals after that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I'm sorry I kind of just uh, messed up the flow of a little bit, but it's because I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get into these matchups. But of course, next we have a Valorant matchup as well that yeah. should be a quarterfinals matchup. Yeah, that's going to be against the University of Missouri. You can see our Saints going flawless in this season 7 and 0. So they're going to be the big uh, favorites going to this one. But Mizzou also having a very, very strong season 5 and 1. A great, great season for them, but let's take a look at the playoff bracket, see how their journeys have been. Let's see, our Saints winning 2-1 against Akron. Actually, Akron putting up a very, very good fight against our Saints, considering they were the 17th seed. So, uh, Saints were able to take that one, and Mizzou was able to beat IVC Blue 2-0 to move into the round of eight. And then on the other side of the bracket, the winner of this matchup will be playing the winner of NCSU Red and Rochester University. 
Right, I mean, you just got to think, right, Mizzou Esports, 5-1. and one. They are the ninth seed. You would think that our varsity team has this one. But again, it's Esports' it's value. You never know how it's going to go. Obviously, you do see, as you mentioned, Akron did take them to that third game. So, you know, you just got to kind of cross your fingers and hope that, you know, Hybrid and his guys are going to have it today. Coach Hybrid, shout out to you. But you got to hope that the guys are going to show up and they're going to play and they're going to end up getting the win, obviously. So, uh, you know, very exciting stuff on the side of all three of these matchups. Huge implications. I want to talk a little bit on the R6 side of things, though, as it should be the first matchup that we're getting into. So going uh, off of what we saw last time, they were facing Marietta uh, College for a chance to make it into the playoffs. There was a round differential with uh, Drexel that they had to, I believe, uh, win by two or something like that. But the whole, or two more than Drexel was the round differential. But going down the stats that I've collected here, going 7-0 on Oregon, they look really, really good there. That is a comfort map for them, uh, especially up against uh, Butler. You would think that they're probably going to try to see if they can bring them there in terms of maps right now i really think based on the fact that they versed butler last time looking at when they versed butler last time they you know went into it thinking they kind of had them figured out on the first map they didn't i believe it was actually oregon and that butler was able to get the win on them over on oregon and then butler pulled out something that no one has really gone up against yet and that was night haven labs a map that a lot of teams are really just kind of scared of it's a newer map in the in the pool and one that most teams haven't had a lot of time to kind of get under uh you know the practice and, and get kind of concrete and ready to go. So Butler has a really good night haven on them and St. Clair just wasn't ready for it. And Butler just absolutely had their way with them over on night haven. So you got to think in terms of map bans that St. Clair is going to ban out uh, night haven against Butler because you just don't want to see that happening again. Yeah. Again, they've kind of looked like they've strengthened a little bit on that Oregon pick. So you, you know, you might see that you might not, it depends. But uh, other than that, it seems like clubhouse is probably going to be sort of a standard for even both teams. I think yeah. both Butler and and St. Clair would kind of want to see who has the bigger uh, clubhouse um, fav favoritism on clubhouse. So we'll see what kind of happens there. But a little bit of a, you know, mixed pick as well that, you know, a lot of people aren't kind of thinking of. I could see St. Clair actually bringing Butler to Skyscraper as well. Mm -hmm. A map that, you know, again, not very many teams in NA really favor, like, to kind of go into. That's a little more of an EU sort of preference. So, uh, again... Uh, the Saints have been uh, working, to my understanding, on a little bit of skyscrapers, so I'm just surprised. You never know. You might see a little bit of sky coming out, too. But yeah. A lot of strategy goes into our six. You know, probably one of the most, if not the most strategic game out of all games that we see on on the out of the Saints. So we're going to have to see a lot of different strategies pulled out. As you said, some interesting map choices coming in from both teams. So... That's going to be a very, very, uh, like, once we see the map bands, that's going to be a big indication of where each team is comfortable. I think if the Saints can really ban out the maps they're not good against, that's going to give them a big big advantage here. But Butler, as you said, a very strong team on both sides. There's going to be a couple maps that both teams favor, so it's just going to be a game of who's better today. Right. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about as well uh, uh, is just the impact of Jocks. Uh, for those who do follow the Saints everywhere, we uh, you do know that Jocks, congratulations, did win the Academy uh, R6 Player of the Year. And for right reason, I was kind of doing some dives so far onto um, at least the last matchup in the series. Of course, on that support, Jocks is kind of a huge role, obviously. And, you know, the job of a support player is not to die early, obviously, on the side of defense, especially because you need them to survive on the attack or the defense to get the execute going down so i was thinking you know what's jocks's survival rate on saint uh saint round wins just kind of see how crucial he is ladies and gentlemen this man survives 70 percent of all rounds that saint Clair ends up winning which means that if you you know lose jocks early the chances of you losing are quite high honestly yeah. but if jock stays alive and can stay alive for like a really long time usually into that end round it almost favors a 70% win rate. So again, that is kind of the key for our super support guy on the side of Jocks. It'll be interesting to see how Butler sort of tries to play around him or whether it's him or get it or uh, nullifying the effect of Rapid that he's had over the course. But again, it'll all be decided when we uh, come back from a very short break as R6 should be coming up very quickly.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. Saints Nation, we see that now we are into the server bands going down on a map that is Chalet, assuming that's Butler's pick because St. Clair, not a very favorable map, and it's no surprise here that they're going to take the ban onto Dokubi. They want to make sure of, obviously, Dokubi is kind of just an S-tier op uh, operator right now because of just the, the sheer amount of intel that she can gather off of those calls putting people out of position like Vigil on the roam, Legion as well. Like, you know, people who the Saints really like to run. So decent ban out of St. Clair there. And Capital will be the ban from Butler. Also a really, really good operator to ban out just because Capital helps with clearing that position, that person hiding in the corner of Library on the top floor. Solus as well, a very good ban out from Butler. Uh, so no uh solace on the side of saint Clair. now saint Clair with the final ban we'll see who they choose to take out and it is going to be fenrir no surprise there so we do see that deimos left on the board but as uh you know the weeks have gone by people have kind of shifted away from deimos i think people have learned how to play around it a little more so it'll be interesting to see what Butler brings out for this attack. We do see the Flores, the Ace, Hibana, Zof, and also assuming Big G gets the final pick down. It is going to be the Ash. So we're going with a double hard breach, but a pretty standard uh, lineup for a chalet attack coming in from Butler, obviously with the attacking repick as well. They can choose to change that. However, I will say right now, Theo, I'm a little bit scared because Chalet is a map that St. Clair has been uh, trying to work on, but for the most part, they don't really necessarily like playing into it. Uh, it's often a map that a lot of NA teams don't like, especially, but it's a little more commonly picked on the Brazilian side of things, which tailors towards Butler's sense of play, assuming that, you know, they're also a really good Night Haven team. Chalet is another one of those maps where on the defense, you can just be extremely aggressive. Almost every floor is soft, so there's definitely going to have to be a lot of vertical play as well. So, you know, it's going to be a very interesting game. And we do see that the change from the Ash to the Nomad comes out on the side of Butler. Yeah, we're going to see if Butler want to go clear out the top floor first, or how they're going to choose to attack this one. We're all pushing in from one side. It looks like they will be trying to go from up to down as the bombs are on the middle floor. Looking to go pretty quickly, surprisingly, here. Not a droning out too much, but they know that there's a lot of space to work here. R6, a game that definitely requires a lot of strategy. Now we're going to see the teams a droning out, try and spot out something. You can see Saints still getting their reinforcements in. That's why Butler maybe is trying to go in so, so quickly. But no gunfight is going to go just down yet. There's going to be a couple castle walls, so... Butler gonna have to destroy those, but Saints, first minute, not a, not finding any picks, but not getting picked off either. It's a good start for both teams. And we do see the first engagement coming through. Rapid will take a little bit of damage, but right now, if you're Butler, there are two things you gotta clear out. You have to clear out Rapid on the top of main stairs, and you have to get rid of that shield in Library Hall. It seems that they have been able to do that. So now clearing the player out of, I assume, Library would be the next thing. Assuming you deal with these castle barricades with the Flores drones, such a great pick right now. Having four of those Rotero drones should go to work on those castle barricades and get all of that intel. So they do know the open positions now are coming through. We do have a player indeed in library and it's going to be a triple commit to the library hold for St. Clair as they need to have that control. The engagement will come through and Rapid has nowhere to go. That Rotero drone will actually pick up the kill as well. A little bit of an unorthodox way to go down, yeah. but the pressure happens. So now Salty Boy has to reposition and hold that library side. Charm picked off on the side of Blue Stairs as well and it is not looking good for the first start on defense. Yeah, they're going to get a pick back though onto Raikai. That's a great to start if you want to come back into this round but this can be a crucial engagement can salty boy find this pick in the one v one he's going to get tagged up has to be careful here will get out with his life he's going to get a bit of assistance from his teammate but down goes a salty boy to jonesy jocks holding a tight angle here alongside k-rob also announced not going to be able to find the shot still a minute left for butler so much time to work with jocks sitting on these mirrors as you said kind of their last member who's going to be keeping the hold down but jonesy's going to pick up k-rob now in the one before scenario it's going to be really, really hard to hold on here for Jox to see if he can get a kill or two to start it off. Going to get one. Can he find a second? Almost picks it up. But that's going to be Jonesy picking up yet another one on the round as Butler taking one-0 advantage. 
And that's just tough because the engagement is also going to come through the swing through the doorway as well. So you have a double swing on through the uh, window. And, you know, yes, that C4 is in pocket, but the second Jox moves out to try to take any ground or maybe even swing that position regardless if he stayed behind that mirror window or not. It was definitely kind of the beginning of the end. So St. Clair with a little bit of a, you know, not a great start to their uh, okay, bar the and uh, cool can. defense, but it does not uh, matter to them because they're going to realize that didn't work. We're not going to double down Let's on it. it Let's switch it up. And now they're going to go to kitchen and dining. Yeah, and you're going to see mostly the same picks, but we're going to see a mute at this time come out alongside a charm on okay. that flash, flash. So. Clash definitely very strong on the defensive end, gives you a lot of information and can hold down kind of a doorway all by their lonesome. But if working with a teammate that Clash can be very, very strong, Butler gonna go for some interesting picks as well, kind of switching up their whole team composition based right. on where this bomb site is. Right, well, I mean, they see what they need now. Uh, they have the holes decided. It is going to be interesting to see that Amaru with the diffuser as well. Not typically a pick you see usually unless you're throwing rank games. The Sens as well. Based on what I see from this lineup, the Lion uh, in addition, this is going to be a 3-2-1 sort of execute. You're going to have the Amaru set up in the basement just underneath the dining hatch. And what's going to happen is when that 3-2-1 goes down, the Sens is going to throw his gadgets into that dining site and then the Amaru I'm assuming is going to hit the uh, hatch immediately with the Thermite probably getting a breach onto the main wall so again this should be kind of a, like I said before a little bit of a 3 to one execute because uh, again, that's kind of the lineup they bring the first engagement comes through Jocks on that Jaeger is able to do just a little more damage than he was dealt from Jonesy and so it is going to be interesting to see now with Jonesy on 1 HP Jocks might be able to survive a shot or two as they clear the Solarium oh, stairs, it is going to be the Amaru gone now. Salty Boy cutting her down with the UMP, and it's also worth noting that that's also Diffuser gone cold. That's a great a pick for the side of the Saints now. They know where the Diffuser is. They can place one slowly. Shots come down from Rapid, almost picks it up there. But won't be able to find the headshot. Rapid gonna get taken out to 1 HP, but Jox will pick up Jonesy. Now Saints have a 5v3 advantage, and they have to capitalize here in this round. Salty Boy gonna get a second of the round onto Mad Dog as Butler. Just did not execute this attack very, very well. Saints able to find the picks left and right. You can see the last two members of Butler choosing to rotate all the way out. But you have to think, with the way Saints are playing this round, this is going to be theirs to lose. They're going to look to break through here, Butler University, and try and go all the way around. But they're so far away from the bomb sign. Saints still have a lot of time to work with if you're... Uh, on the side of Butler here, but with only two members, it's gonna be so so hard. There's gonna be a player here up atop, but it's gonna be that. Gosh, so let's see. He's gonna spot out the members, but can't really take any damage. This is the value Charm gets here. Five v two scenario. It's even stronger knowing where the last two members are from the opponents. They're gonna look to try and push Thermite that uh, hard wall. They're gonna get it off, but 50 seconds left. They have to work quickly if they want to win this round. And the thing is, the Clash is just going to hold in this position for a long time. And no matter what they do, whether they try to reposition or not, it's just intel that the Clash can feed. No reason to whip the gunner to try anything stupid. They can just let the people on site deal with this all. And as St. Clair starts to move, probably with those players down from the top floor onto, Solar uh, onto Solarium and come through. Ooh, Gravy actually going to be able to get the pick onto Jocks, but the trade does come through from Rapid. I was just about to say, the Saints players should kind of drop a level, switch up, and just kind of turtle up for the rest of this defense. 15 seconds left. Gravy <laughs> forcing to go through the prone hole. It's not going to happen. The Clash says, no way, Jose. And now it is going to have to be Gravy with an impossible clutch on his hands. It will not happen. He's just going to try to bait out another swing from St. Clair. That is not going to happen. Finds a kill for his efforts on to Rapid. But at the end of the day, the timer hits zero. St. Clair put one up on the board. Great round there from the Saints. Quickly responding to Butler's uh, attack and they kind of put the pressure on them. They found the early picks, they found the early swings and giving them their numbers advantage early. That's how the Saints need to look to play this defense. Can we let Butler take the initiative even on that defensive end? And now they're going to be going to the wine cellar, snowmobile garage set up. Let's see if uh, Butler can break through. And given how well that defense onto kitchen and dining went, I would not be surprised in round four if you see that get brought back out again. So. Again, St. Clair with a decent defense there. 
but they have to try to follow it up. And the only problem that I saw in that round, even though it was a really clean round from St. Clair, is bringing out the Clash. Now, don't get me wrong, the Clash is a great pick here and it works out, but what it also says is a little bit of desperation. It's not typically someone who you want to bring out in the start of a game. It kind of shows the other team that you are really dependent on that Clash to stay alive, to give that intel, to hold the power position. So it also kind of says like, okay, you know, they're not very confident in their own ability to hold this. They need to bring a shield. It's the same thing when you see a Monty on the attacking side as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how Butler treats this given what St. Clair has shown them and given the fact that there is no clash to hold any power position now with the take that we kind of see. The Ram is going to do the damage on the Vert. Jackal the roam clear, the Thatcher ace combo to try to get the wall, and also the Ying for the execute is what I'm assuming. The hatch uh, sh hatches should be taken as well from her hard breaching device. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. And they're going to open up the whole floor there, so Saints have to be careful on the lower end of their jock. Seems to be like going to be the one uh, looking up there. Actually, on the Jaeger here, going to be a hard roaming operator on what you said is kind of their most defensive player. That's an interesting pick up for him there. You can see uh, sitting there on the bandit charm making sure that that garage door doesn't get breached because if it does that makes the round a lot easier for the defensive side. No thatch or anything for the side of Butler so hoping that garage door should be nearly impossible unless some crazy kill comes out onto the bandit through a challenge. A minute gone by now. Butler trying to make some progress. Jackal not going to be spotted or anything. Very, very dangerous position. Could have maybe found the shot there, Gravy, but nice little movement there from side of the Saints. Yeah, Actually, eventually, Gravy will get that pick to start off the round. Let's see how Butler chooses to initiate. Gonna throw out the flashes there. Let's see if they can push into the site. No picks coming through yet. And Saints are holding their ground. Now Butler looking to regroup together on, on the bottom floor. And looking to hit from all angles. Gravy in a very dangerous position here, trying to find something, but nobody from the Saints is. Do they know about the blue? player in blue. I don't think they know about the player in blue, and that's going to be a really hard pill to swallow, but Corey's going to find two and give the advantage, not the advantage, but tie the round back up for 3-3. Three, three. I really thought, Theo, that that was going to be a horrible sequence of events there. I don't think with the ace sum was going off, they heard the player. Rapid finds another one onto Recal, and now this is just absolute mayhem happening in the boiler push. It is going to have to be the commitment from Butler as well. They can't afford to move back out. Jonesy, they're getting these picks, and I don't honestly know why St. Clair is peaking this. You can afford to play time here, at least when you had the man advantage. Now that will not be the case. Not only have uh, Butler gotten the momentum, they're getting the plant down, and they have the health advantage. Nitro Cell will come out, but will not do enough damage. Jonesy should be able to get this plant down, and now it's going to have to be a couple of hero plays from St. Clair. Charm with the first one, though, and he finds the first pick. The angle on top of the car inside a small garage. Charm can just kind of hold this right now. Pros don't fake is the saying. We'll see. Will they be able to get it off? Charm goes off the diffuser and he times it absolutely perfectly. A beautiful play there by Charm. Everyone thought he was going to stick it, but the steps of the sprint were heard. The sound gets him off the diffuser. A perfect shot and he gets the first clutch and the lead for St. Clair. Great clutch there from Charm in the 1v2 post plan scenario. Just great, great play. As you said, the fake out. You know, as, a, as, the, as the attacking player, you have to check that bomb. You have to sprint over to it because you don't know if he's on it or not. And it's just a great, a great mind game coming out from, from him there. He gets the clutch. Now Saints put themselves in the advantage up to one. Still a lot of defensive rounds to go. If you're on the Saints side, you can't let go of the gas pedal. That round, a little bit too close for comfort in the end. They did, uh, Butler did have a 5v3 advantage, advantage as well at some point in that round. So the fact that Saints would win that one is a huge, huge momentum swing. They're going to go back to this uh, defense here. And a uh, similar type of setup. They're going to have the Jaeger, Castle, Mira, Frost, and Mute setup. So going to have a lot of uh, room to hold. But Butler University definitely going to have to switch uh, some things up here on the offense. The Saints are just getting the better of them on these engages. See, now, it is true that I think that Butler needs to switch up on the offense for a little bit. But the Saints have actually picked into uh, games and... Um, oh, sorry. Pool and... Uh, 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm bringing the site name. But the first floor site. Wow, new play for me. But what I will say is that it's interesting because St. Clair did not win on the pool games, or sorry, the bar games defense. There we go. There Thank you, go. Patrick. But <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So it is going to be interesting to see how Butler sort of takes control here. Again, with the lineup oh, that they have. Like yeah, the Solarium players should be getting some pressure and it's not going to go down the way of St. Clair. Gravy with an absolutely brilliant find onto Rapid to start off. Rapid with a little more of a slower start to this game, but then again, it is Chalet, a map that St. Clair are kind of like uncomfortable on. So it's going to be interesting to see how they can kind of fight back, especially when they picked into a site that they got absolutely trounced on in the first round. Yeah, and you can see a couple of players here playing on the stairs. This is where Saints want to hold it down. That castle wall will get blown up. Still, Butler taking their time as they have a lot of it. They're going to look to push through on the attack Saints. Playing it slow, not going for too many early engages. You can see this uh, Hibana will be making a lot of room as well with her utility there. Jock's gonna look for something early, but nobody's there. And Jones yet again with this drone will look for something. Charm though will pick up Gravy. That's a great, great pick for them. Now making it a 4v4 scenario. And Charm sitting here on these stairs definitely got called out. Jock's again gonna be holding this. In uh, angle down, Salty Boy gonna look for early pick, pick there, won't find it, takes a bit of damage, now she's gonna go down to Big Tree, that mirror's gonna get popped as well, as somehow Big Tree has gotten into such a good position here, can he find anything more on the attack, you can definitely see Butler flooding in behind him now still, 3-4 scenario for the Saints, a very very winnable charm, gonna get dazed up there, will still be alive though, which is all that really matters in the end, a minute 10 and counting Butler, you just start pushing their aggression and advantage a little bit, but Saints doing a good job of holding on. Ryan, it's going to be interesting to see how the engagement falls onto Corey here on the blue stairs. Big Chi should have oh. the swing, and it should be a kill in the future. The second that player goes out from kitchen, the call will go out. And even if Jocks get this play, gets this player onto kitchen hall, the player from blue will just swing, there and there it is. So it is going to be Big Chi to pick up the double. And again, an interesting scenario for St. Clair. You know, they don't even have the hatch reinforced there, and you know, it's just the same thing. Another 1v4 now. The angle the same being mirror. found out has to move from the mirror window from the Nomad. And it's going to be the pickup from Raikai. My apologies, I did call him Raikal earlier. So Raikai doing a really good job to cut down the last player from St. Clair that AK-12 in hand through the Selma breaches that he made. Yeah, I mean, he's gone to such a good position, did Raikai. I found a couple of picks, opened up a mirror, and that kind of just dismantled St. Clair's defense. So that defensive position, probably not somewhere we're going to see Saints go again. Hasn't worked out for them twice now against Butler, who really have that number, their number on that first floor. Let's see where Saints decide to Defender set up on the defense. Looks like, like they're going to be going upstairs. Uh, back to no, kitchen. Back, back to kitchen, actually, where they did win their round on kitchen. They had a good, good defense. They found some uh, good roams and got some early pickoffs. So let's see if that's going to be the way they decide to play defense. Now they're going to have a Valkyrie here alongside the Clash again, which, which is, I think they have a set strategy for this site with this Clash, just to hold down maybe the, the upstairs and make sure nothing really goes down, no crazy angles. So let's see how Saints uh, decide to play this one defensively. If it goes something like last round, uh, last time they defended on this one, it should be a good round for them. Right, I mean, I just saw the clash immediately get picked out, and I already knew they were going to that kitchen defense. That clash was just absolutely unclearable for the side of Butler, so they need to find a way to force that clash into an uncomfortable position. But now assisted from the Valkams, I know they have one in Library Hall on the side of, being thrown by the side of Rapid. So it's going to be interesting to see as the take does come through onto the library balcony, you gotta wonder right now if they go for a split push maybe on the mezzanine and it seems like they're going to do exactly just that hopefully trying to clear out this clash and maybe just maybe getting uh the vert control as they would have loved to do last round yeah it looks like the round before we did this it looks like butler definitely wants to take uh, that uh, upper floor but you can see the clash just sitting there looking through their <laughs> through that little uh Shots through the wall there, and nothing, nothing can sense uh, the Butler can really do. You can see the Finca, maybe gonna go and try and go on the flank and pick up Charm here, but Charm is just gonna happily stay here, make sure he can't uh, die, and just absorb time and pressure here for Saints. And the grenade's gonna go out. Charm's actually gonna go down to one HP, but Salty Boy finds a pick onto Big G. That's gonna be a great start here for the side of Butler, uh, for the side of Saints. Rapid gonna pick up Mad Dog now. Is 
Because yet again, Butler just can't seem to find a way through. They put so much into killing this clash that the rest of the team just falls apart. The Saints have a 5v3 scenario where they're going to be shooting under those reinforced walls. But won't be able to find anything. Still, Saints in a very, very good position to win this round. Right, I mean, they can just hold on to library control, right? Maybe vacate the actual, uh, or sorry, not library control, but library hall control or piano control, more or less. As the players need to swing in through there. But Butler, they're going to reposition. They want to just take this wall. They want to take it quick. But when this call is made out, it's again going to be interesting Ooh. to see as the Nitro Cell goes through the top of the wall, beautifully placed by Corey Robb. And now it's going to be that much harder for Butler to try to get this round off on the Saints. It's going to be practically impossible, especially with that Clash still alive, who can just kind of neutralize a player all by their lonesome. You can see they're trying to do something against the Clash, but what can you really do? It seems like Butler really struggle against this defensive pick from the Saints, but the Saints strategy on this side has just been impeccable so far in this map. The shots comes out from Jonesy. He's going to keep shooting at that Clash. Will get swung. Won't go down. He's gonna look for a shot. Does down Kirob actually, but now in the 1v5 scenario, Salty Boy picks up Gravy. It's gonna be so, so hard for Jonesy to find any more kills here. They know exactly where he is, and with 30 seconds and counting, this can be yet another round. The Saints more than surely should wrap up, but there's a player above him. It's gonna take him down to 1 HP. Rapid gonna find that one. Saints gonna win another defensive round and gonna put themselves up 3-2. Right, it's a really good job from Rapid there, just retaking that mezzanine control, not making sure to overpeak. You just want to kind of hold that bar rotation, and that was a really good job done there by Rapid and the guys. So going up three to two is nice, but you gotta hope that you come away with this four to two advantage. You don't want Butler to go three three on their own map on an attacking map on on the attack, and then transition over onto a defense that they can play really defense aggressively on, which I know in the past has kind of troubled the Saints. So Butler does kind of have this game style that it's gonna be interesting to see how St. Clair adapts to it well when they are attacking. But so far so good. You just gotta hope that they can bring this last round home on the side of the defense. Yeah, I mean, last time they were able to take this one. It was a very close one, a 1v1 clutch coming out, but this time they're going to look to make it a more convincing one. This one, you have to keep that garage door closed, and they were able to do that last time with the mute alongside Bandit, so a great job honed down from them as they're going to be going for a similar copy. You can see Butler switching up a few picks, but still going to keep it pretty basic. Yeah, and now let's just take a look at the defensive side. I want to make a comment right now on Corey Rob on the Azami. I love seeing the Azami played here in the basement. She can just hold down blue, like, flawlessly. And then also give support as well onto the boiler push if it does happen. So, it's going to be interesting to see how those Kiba barricades are used, especially with the recent uh, patchworks where you can shoot out those Kibas. Uh, again, does take a full mag, but for higher caliber weapons, that will not be the case. You can get them down earlier, but those weapons are not being brought out from Butler, so that shouldn't be an issue. The Oso working herself in near West Main through basement hallway, and now it is going to be interesting to see. Do they have a player on West Main on the side of St. Clair? I don't necessarily know if they do, but I do know that they, they have that player sitting behind the Kiba Barricade onto Wine, so it's going to be interesting to see how Butler deals with this if they want to go patiently, quickly, but one thing does still remain the same. They're definitely going for this boiler take, and it should go down in a matter of the next couple seconds. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of utility coming out here. Let's see how they're able to push into this one. No picks coming out from either team yet, but the swings will surely come through as it does get blown up a little bit still. Nobody from the Saints going to peek down. You can see Gravy wants to blow up that wall as well. And there it's going to be coming out. Saints have to be careful here as they're getting pinched from a lot of sides. Three members in this room. Jack's going to be the first one to drop to Big G here. It's a good start for Butler. They're going to find another one onto Corey as well. Now Saints in a very tough a position here. The Ruby 5 scenario still holding it down. Gravy's going to get taken to low HP, but will find the kill on to Rapid. The Saints are falling apart here on the defensive side. All up to Salty Boy and Charm here to go crazy on the defense and try and give them the advantage, but no. Salty Boy is going to be in the 1v5 scenario. Picks up Gravy. He's going to have to do God's work. Finds another one here. Has the shotgun now, but the fuser is planted. 40 seconds to work here for, for Salty Boy. And you'd have to think to yourself, Butler, with these longer range of weapons and the positioning should be able to hold 
way I'm still salty, but you're gonna give it a try. Throws out the Nitro Cell, is not able to find anything with that one. Gonna push through, swing to the side. There's a player right behind that wall, but obviously he has no idea that's the case still. Gonna be looking in every single peak possible, but Butler are playing this one smart. They're playing it patiently, and they're not taking on any unnecessary peaks as Mad Dog is gonna be able to pick up a Salty Boy. That's gonna be the end of the half, and we're tied up at three apiece. Right, and I mean, again, it's just masterfully done by Butler. They get a breach onto uh, the West Main Wall and then immediately say, okay, that didn't work. They're just going to impact trick from blue. So what can we do? Let's switch over to that boiler wall, have the Osa to hold the long angle anyway. It's not like we were going to enter from there regardless. Make sure that we only just commit one Selma there. We can switch up, put the other two on boiler wall, have the Thatcher there to get rid of the Mute Jammer, and it's all smooth sailing from there. The Ying as well was a really good pick, even though the Jaeger was on the board on the side of St. Clair. The ADSs were really well dealt with, with uh, for by the Thatcher as well. So it was decent to see just honestly how much better that push looked from Butler. Scary sights now as it's 3-3 and now if you're St. Clair, you have to try to at least win three attacks if you want to get this thing to overtime against a Butler defense that you have to imagine is going to be very aggressive. Yeah, you have to imagine Butler on their uh, map pick. Uh, definitely have the defense down as very very strong on this map but you know saints did show a lot of fight in that first half taking three rounds off of butler did a great job in those and put up quite a good fight in the other few that they lost but still they're gonna be coming out here on the attack let's see how they decide to do it it's gonna be a early early push here from the saints and they should try and take the upstairs here to maybe have a bit of on fire from the top, but you can see Butler all sitting in that room. There's gonna be at least a Jaeger in here. Can the Saints find an early pickoff on him there? Uh, it doesn't look like Saints are gonna choose to push him just yet, but there is a member of the Saints upstairs here. And this is gonna be a, some huge, huge gunfights here up on this third floor. Gravy holding down the hallway. Jonesy trying to hold down the windows, but all the Saints members gonna look to push through here. They're gonna be droned out as well, so this Jaeger should get pushed from a couple sides here. Flash has come out, won't hit. The nade comes out, beautiful nade. Will do a bit of damage alongside the Flash. Jonesy gonna look for some shots early. Yet another nade comes out. There it is, Rapid gonna pick that one up. A great start for the Saints, but a nice pick comes out from Big Chi onto Rapid to even things up still. Big Chi gonna get taken down to one HP, but will be able to stay alive which is so so crucial should be just looking to get out with his life here very fortunate for that to be the case still saints in the 44 now gonna have some control over this top floor they're gonna look to push in as butler seemed to have given up the top floor but Jax can get a bit too aggressive there mad dog will find a pick 3v4 scenario now for the side of the saints now they finally have control of this upstairs but this castle is being so so obnoxious here big g is on one hp on the side of butler so if Saints can find one bullet onto him there. That should be the kill, but now all Saints have entered the building. They're going to look to work their way down as they only have a minute 20 seconds to work with. And it's just rough, right? I mean, I believe the call didn't go out in time when the Grim hit the uh, castle. So, or yeah, the castle. So it was just an easy retake and a quick pick, not able to get traded back out. A hard pill for the Saints to swallow, so it is going to be interesting to see. Even though they have this verticality, I don't know how well they're going to be able to convert it here, especially when all of Reloading. Butler is just able to just kind of turtle up. Yeah. And with the seconds winding down at 45, oh. yeah, it's just going to be a really hard task at hand to try to move these Butler players. Mad Dog picking up one as well on the Salty Boy Charm. All that's left. Going to find one from Mezzanine. Oh. Finds two, actually. Going to try to pick up the confirmation it's on winnable. the kill. 1v2, it is winnable and diffuser as well, so it isn't cold. But Charm has to move quickly. He needs to try to force two 1v1s instead of a 2v1 is the ideal scenario. Throws the Thatcher nade out. But the Butler defender should not be th t taking any peaks here. Charm in now an almost unwinnable situation with 12 seconds left. Has to try to take a swing. The swing comes through bar. Has the injure as well. Charm, don't tell me you're going to do it oh. again. No, not quite. As the player from Butler, Raikai, able to just hold the position inside of bar stock, finds the pickup on to Charm to end the round. Almost an insane cluster coming out from Charm, finding three, but one too many for him to take down his Butler. 
Started off that round very strong, kind of falling apart towards the later ends. Not a well executed 4v1 for them, but all that really matters in the end is that they were able to pick up the round as they take a 4 to 3 advantage. Now they're going to be picking up back where they left off on the side, the side defensive end, and they're going to be going back downstairs. Saints weren't able to hold them uh, the last time they were here, but now let's see how Butler decides to play the defense. Right, and it's going to be interesting to see the lineup of the Tuberau, uh, the Azami as well. So a decent choice as well with the Bandit uh, working for Butler. Going to be interesting to see how St. Clair are going to clear out these power potential power positions that can be held down with the Azami. Keep it barricades working in blue. You do see Corey switching over to the Mons. You remember what I said, that desperation shield pick. So... Again, it just kind of shows that St. Clair, uh, you know, maybe don't know this map too, too well, or at least as well as they would have liked to against a competition like Butler. Obviously, if it was another team, maybe Saints would be a little more well versed in the chalet game. But that being said, they're still keeping it close. It is yeah. still only four to three. So whether you want to call it desperation or not, St. Clair is so far making it work out pretty well, considering it isn't their own map choice. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they want to clear the snowmobile wall. Yeah, it's going to be obviously one of the hardest places to break into and in all of Siege. Do they have anything? They have the Thatcher. Let's see if Bandit is up to his game here to get the Bandit trick going. Jock's going to look for it here with the Thermite. Here's going to come out the Thatcher. It's a very, very hard strategy to pull off, but if they do, they have the Monty there. There's going to be another Thatcher nade coming out right after the Thermite nade and Bandit. Just going to be forced to give that one up from the look of things. Yep. Going to be able to pop that one down though, so the wall won't. Actually, it will go. That's a great, a great start for the Saints, but Butler actually going to find the pick. Still, Saints have that Monty available. If he can just get onto that site and start uh, getting the plant down zone behind him, this would be a great start. They're throwing the smokes there. Nitro Cell will take down the third by 2-1 HP, but still, Saints going to be alive. Jack's going to look to get that plant down. Rapid's going to go down. So will Key Rob. Charm's going to go down. It's going to be all up to Jax in the 1v5, and they just fell like flies. They tried to rush in there, get the plant down with the Monty, but it's going to be Butler taking a 5-3 a lead in this map. Yeah, and I do believe that there actually might be a problem with the lobby, and there is. So there is going to be a game server disconnect, but that round will go over to Butler, obviously, because yeah. if it didn't, that just wouldn't be fair. So yeah. again, we'll get you guys back into that server very shortly, hopefully shortly, but sometimes these rehosts take a little bit. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. So we are back into the lobby now. It seems that it was probably, if I had to guess or observe, that disconnected as I do see across the board, no one with zeros. Yep, so no one actually had to leave on the player side of things. But interesting now is we see the attack go down on Kitchen Dining and the Blitz immediately is what I want to point out coming yeah. in from Corey Rob on the side of St. Clair with the Finca as well from Salty Boy. The Grim on the execute as well. So, I mean, again, this is probably going to be another 3-2-1 execute to get the Blitz into Trophy, but we'll see how it goes down. Yeah, let's see how Saints trying to attack here. Butler have been really good on the defensive side so far. Clean 5 for acing them in that last round, but... With a strategy, with that Monty trying to get in the plant, that's either how it's going to go or it's going to go completely the other way. So let's see. They're going to be rushing in here with the blitz. Yep, I love their strategy from the Saints here. Looking to get the plant down early. Charm going to take down Raikai as well. Great start here for the Saints. And the plant should be going down. Gravy's going to find a trick back onto Rapid. But Butler not ready for the Saints to just rush in here. They're going to be trying to drop in from the hatch. Kirob going to get taken down to 1 HP. But the fact that he lives on that blitz is so, so crucial. Actually going to get taken down by Charm. Gonna find the trade onto Jones here. Salty Boy finds Mad Dog. Gravy is down as well. So that's a 1v4 for Big G. Will find one, but gonna have to do so much to bring this one back. Great round there from the Saints as they rush onto the site and make it a 5 4 game. Right, beautifully done there by St. Clair. They see the verts being held and they say, screw that. There's no holes up top. We're just going to make sure that we get this blitz into Trophy on that 3 to one execute exactly as I stated. He immediately works his way into Kitchen and finds the avenue for Charm to get the plant down into dining. So it was really interesting and a really good push there from St. Clair. Pressure came in obviously again through uh, dining from the Izami, but again it was too little too late. The damage had already been done. Great round by St. Clair and they cut back in this game now. Only down by one round again, four to five, but have a lot of work to do if they ever want to go winning this one. Yeah, without a doubt, this can be around. They they kind of need to take yeah, home if they want to bring themselves back into this one. Don't want to let Butler be on match point for a couple uh, rounds. That would be very, very dangerous a game to play. You can see uh, that Butler want to maintain control of this upper floor. They don't want to give the Saints control of this one. Last time, we saw the Saints try and break through. They were able to get into the top floor, but just kind of got picked off left and right. And it was a hard round for them to win this time. Well, they're gonna have a couple frost mats down as well up here. So Saints have to be careful that one uh, split second they have to look down to shoot at the frost mat could be the difference between life and death, especially at such a high level of play. So let's see how Saints decide to attack uh, this one. They're gonna be going for a fuse. Not something you see too often at the highest level of play, I wanna say, but let's see if the Saints can make it work. Well, again, it's going to be interesting, um, but it's probably just a clear out positions in bar, I would assume, because no one really sits in pool other than the uh, uh, bar stock room. So, again, going to be interesting. Gravy uh, just with an absolutely beautiful pick as well onto Koi Rob. And, or, and now Jonesy is going to drop from that library position. Doesn't want to get hit out last time with the Thatcher, uh, you know, EMPs and the nades that flood into that library side. Oh, no, for the Usami, but a beautiful one-tap coming in from Salty Boy. Slow peak, but he finds the head nonetheless and pulls the trigger first. Getting rid of that Azami is so crucial. No more Kiba barricades to come up for the rest of the round. Great, great pick there from Rapid. Now gives Saints back onto even terms. Still a minute 50, a lot of time to work the Salty Boy gonna try and clear this out. They're gonna have the information that nobody is up here on this third floor as they try to make their way in here. They will love this uh, vertical movement, but Charm gonna get tagged up a little bit still. Not too bad, but what is bad is Jocks going down, and it's gonna be a couple more picks coming out for Butler. They put themselves in a 4v1 scenario. It's gonna be all onto Salty Boy here on this fuse. Gonna be very, very hard to pull this one off. Doesn't have the diffuser either. Will pick up one more Maddox. It's gonna be a miracle clutch here neither from Salty Boy though to pick this one up as now I think Butler are gonna play a little bit more passive. They don't need to take these ag aggressive challenges. The Fuser is down inside, so if he ever wants to jump in to pick that one up, that is a death a sentence as Butler University have all three members just chilling on the site, waiting for Salty Boy to make his move. And it's gonna be a hard one for, for him to win. Right, and I mean, again, Salty Boy, if, if I'm Salty Boy in this predicament, right, I mean, you could go from the engagement or you could kind of just bait and more or less take kind of a tactical timeout, let the team kind of talk and think about what they want to do for the next round. 
because with the place that a fuser is put in right now, there really seems oh. to be no... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there seems to be no chance of him winning this at all. The Frost Mat, who too is undoing in library. So, again, going to be a very tough one for St. Clair to come back on. This isn't their map, obviously, and they've played very good up until that point, but... So far, it is going to be 6-4, Butler on match point in the best of three. I mean, the map is still far from over. A couple rounds in a row here will give Saints a chance at winning it in overtime. But as you said, Butler have looked so, so strong on this defensive end. On their map pick, they're going to be going for a, another defensive hold here. It looks like downstairs alongside... The Bandit and Mira are going to be their two main defensive options. You won't have to wonder, if you're the side of the Saints, do you want to go for that offensive push again through, through the garage? You got the garage opened up, but after that it was kind of a disaster for them. It doesn't look like they're going to be going for that one, but they still, they still have the Thatcher and the... Uh, Sorry, the name. Thatcher and the uh, Thermite you're yeah. talking about? For the yeah, 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 the Thatcher and the Thermite to get through the utility of uh, Butler. But they don't have a Monty or a Blitz this time, so it's going to be way harder to push in from uh, from the garage side. It might be looking like they're going to go for that boiler attack yet again. Yeah, and uh, I mean, why shouldn't they? It's so far been kind of the case of what to do, but it is going to be interesting to see Big Chief setting up this mirror setup to try to derail any sort of progress being done over the main floor, possibly on the vert by Rapid on that buck and Salty Boy on the ram. So, interesting to see the mirror being placed there, and I actually do like it, I am a fan of it, but the problem is when the intel does come out, if Rapid can find this entry onto the player playing in piano right now, this mirror will not be able to stay in kitchen, she will have to vacate because the vert will be created, and that mirror window will will be destroyed. Exactly that. So let's see how Saints play this offense. That'd be a great, great plan to follow. They've taken some space here upstairs. Just droning out, making sure nobody's up here from the side of Butler. And from the look of things, Butler are fully conceding the top floor, but they're gonna have some challenges coming out from the Legion, maybe. He's roaming up there, Charm will be going down. Still able to stay alive though, so the res could come through here for the side of the Saints. Not all terrible here, but still now Charm gonna be on one HP for the rest of the round here. Still staying alive is so, so important as now Saints look to make their way on down. Salty Boy gonna open up the floors there a little bit, gonna look maybe for a peek from this third floor. Would be quite an interesting angle. Charm gonna spot out one with that drone, giving over some information to his teammates. The Mira is so, so dangerous there. Even though nobody's sitting on it, they have to respect it. As the challenges come through. Salty Boy gonna find a pick onto Big Chi. That's a great, great start, but Key Rob will get taken down. Now it's a 3 4 before scenario. The peak comes through from Salty Boy. Does find the opponent. Does get tagged up a couple times. Is able to stay alive, but gonna try and open up this hatch here now. Let's see. He's gonna open up the floor to look for something, but the hatch won't be opened up as rapid. Does fall down. You can see the Saints. Kind of falling apart here on the offense. They're gonna look to attack here with a jogs and salty boy down these stairs. Charm on the thatcher. We'll look for something nice shots there from Gravy, but won't be able to find the pick. A salty boy almost got it there. Gravy though stuck in this position now. We'll go for the swing back, but you can see that Jax gave up that peak for a couple seconds. We'll destroy that barriers. All three Saints are stacked on top of one another. Mad Dog's actually gonna be the one to go down here. Saints have a 3v3. Do they have any idea? There's a person in the corner right there. Charm will get taken down by Jonesy as Saints have 24 seconds and you move quickly Salty Boy gonna get taken down to 1 HP as well it's looking very very rough for the Saints but they still could make the hero place Jack's gonna push in on the Stasher will be able to find one and gonna try and get the plant uh, down 10 seconds and taking Salty Boy trying to defend him shoots the Nitro cell and down goes Jogs in the 1v2 scenario. It's gonna be so so hard for Salty Boy. Has to get the diffuser down. Won't have enough time, and that's gonna be map one going over to Butler University. Right, I mean, you know, a decent job from Butler there to just kind of secure their map as they should. 7-4 being your final score. The Saints one way or one round away from getting it to max regulation. But overtime would have had to be a blessing. Now getting into some Valorant, we do see that the map is sunset and it's going to be interesting to see. Let's go over some 
lineups right now for Agent Select. Yeah, so on the side of St. Clair, there's going to be Giza, Inkstein, Smiley, Seth, and Caillou on the Cypher, Rays, a bre uh, Breach, Omen, and Fade. And on the side of University of Missouri, they're going to be going for a Rays, Sova, Cypher, Omen, and Breach. So very, very similar compositions. The only real difference being the Fade and the Sova, two, uh, two agents that definitely make a lot of room, use a lot of utility, but it's going to be Saints on the defense first and University of Missouri on the attack. Saints being kind of a big favorite going into this one, just have been so, so strong this season. And it's going to be a mid push coming out from University of Missouri. Seth has to be careful here as now it's going to be University of Missouri moving over towards that A side. Saints kind of leaving that one open as it should be quite an easy push. But they could look to get the plant down and Saints probably going to play the 5v5 retake. And it is going to be the engagement that should kind of come through this hallway onto the A site. First engagement goes the way of Happy Rabbit, able to gun down Giza, traded back out from Instinct, but Smiley will drop as well. So the engagement from Seth onto this ramp, it is going to be the pick coming out from Caillou. Been such a good gunner from the Saints this entire season. Instinct with one as oh. well. Instinct with a second wall bang, headshot. Can he find the third through the smoke? No, not quite. Throwing down some utility of his own. The player emerges. And Instinct have a round, the four piece, the 4K from Instinct. And Caillou gonna leave that defuse yeah. Instinct as well, as he should. Beautiful round from Saints and they find their pistol round first. Saints, you know, no, known to be a bit weaker on those pistol rounds, kind of their only weakness. They tend to drop those a little more, more than often. And early in that round, it looked like Missouri definitely had a good position. They had two members on one HP, but Instinct on full HP was able to find everyone from the side of University of Missouri. He's gonna get the defuse as well. He's gonna be really close to that Ray's ultimate. One more round like that, a couple kill, kills here and there, and that's gonna be an ultimate that can definitely change the pace of the game. And you could see University of Missouri are full forcing buying all uh, all this all of them are buying stingers so they're going for a very very risky play they don't want to go down to the saints very early on but the saints as soon as they get those vandals and phantoms in hand they become a super dangerous uh, team to play against you can see the door gonna get opened up here from the side of the they're gonna be moving up mid towards this b side of saints just holding on here caillou Holding this stinger as well. Gonna look maybe for a pick early. That's a beautiful one-way smoke coming out from him. Can he's pointing out? Instinct's gonna be able to find the first pick on to Piggy. And gonna find another one onto Exa. Caillou gonna find it onto Paragon as University of Missouri are dropping like flies. Saints gonna sneak out of this save round, uh, this fourth round from University of Missouri still, they're not even going to drop a one member, it's going to be all up to Happy Rabbit in the 1v5 scenario, Instant feeling himself uh, for sure, going to pick up that ultimate orb which gives him the ultimate, Let's see if he decides to pull it out here, no he won't, Smiley going to take down Happy Rabbit as, as it's a flawless round on a force from University of Missouri. There would have been no way. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest here. Pulling out the other is a little bit ridiculous. Looking back at the double screen, I just want to say, if you don't want to watch uh, the main stream, you can put down exclamation mark streams in the chat, and those streams should be available to pop up to you in case you don't want to hear me and Theo or Theo cast. We do see the bands coming out on the side of Skyscraper for our six is going to be Thatcher, Deimos, Azami, and Solus. And again, just quickly before we go back into Siege, talking about Valorant, it's just Instinct's been popping off right now. He's had an absolutely brilliant start. You gotta hope that they can keep it up. So, looking now onto the Siege side of things as we get underway in this prep phase for what I believe is this karaoke defense from coming out from Butler. Lineup's looking like the Fenrir has been left in. So, that pick will come through and a dangerous one as, he, as a Fenrir on the board can honestly change the entire game for a defense. Yeah, and it's going to be Butler on the defensive side first this time. So if, uh, if the Saints can get off to a hot start, win a couple rounds here and there, and maybe put themselves in the same 3-3-4-2 three, 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 scenario even on that attacking side, that would be a great, a great start for them as as a defense on this map. Probably a little bit stronger, I would say. So Saints going to go for uh, interesting setup here on attack. This time, uh, Charm is going to be able to play on the Dokubi. Yeah, it's not banned out, so that's a very strong uh, attacking operator, as you said. Going to give them so much information on those uh, cell phones. It's going to force Butler to either give away their position or be uh, fully vulnerable for a couple of seconds, as there's going to be the first Dokubi used. Let's see how St. Clair chooses to play this attack. 
right. I mean, it's just difficult because you want to clear out these roamers, but again, those Fenrir guys, just depending on which three are done, are, it's going to be very hard to clear out. We are going to see that the office balcony wall will be opened up now from Jocks on the Thermite. Ping going through. They do have the eyes on the Fenrir, and I don't believe that call has been made or seen, that drone has been seen. But on the side of Butler, it doesn't really matter because the engagement comes through and Salty Boy is the one who loses it. So Big Chi, a really good start with the entry now from Fenrir. And now what you'll start to see from the defense is now exactly they have man advantage. They're all going to start to just pull back to care towards karaoke and they should be able to just kind of play things slow. And I would say just honestly, the furthest extension that you're going to see now from Butler will be someone sitting in, in drum. Yeah, without a doubt, Butler having this man advantage, they seem to know what to do. They come back to the site, they play more conservative and just gonna play for these 1v1 picks, gonna look for the trades and player dragon. Saints gonna go look for early pick here, rapid spots out. One here around the corner, can he pick up that kill? Gonna look for the shots, but it actually will get taken out by Big G in the back. Great positioning there from Butler, baiting a teammate kind of, so another teammate can shoot him in the back. Okay, he's gonna look for a shot there as well, but Kirob not able to find it. The flash will come out. Jack's Jock's gonna look for some shots as well This on this Thermite, but not able to find anything as Butler are doing a great job of suffocating the Saints. Charm finds one through the wall there, but won't find the shots, and this player just sitting behind the statue here, gonna be forcing out so much pressure as Saints still can't seem to take him down as Butler are just sitting all around and making sure that no challenges come through there. Gonna get spot out by the drone. They know exactly where this player is. Kirop gonna be looking there as all three members actually gonna be pushing this one player from Butler, but still so much time. The ball here is Jones is gonna be able to find one. Jax though, gonna push through, find a couple. Can he find the third? Will not be able to do it there. 30 seconds left as it's a 3v2 scenario for Butler. Winnable, but now as these Saints are starting to hit these Gurus mods, it's going to be really interesting to see if they even know about the players sitting in drum. I don't believe so. So that drum player should leave his mark. It will be Raikai to put the final one down. And it was exactly as I stated. The player goes and notice in drum. The pick comes through from Legion. Call out made. The overextension made by St. Clair. And the player in drum cleans stuff up. So... Again, just want to reference on that multi-screen estimation streams in the chat if you want to see the other streams. But now onto Valorant, we do see that hybrid and the boys on the side of that varsity team up 4-0 and a beautiful start against Missouri. I mean, this is textbook from the Saints. Ink Saints with eight kills in four rounds, having an amazing start to this map. And, you know, you, St. Kelly College, they can get off to these hot starts. When they win those pistol rounds, these score lines get really, really scary. And you will really want to see if the Saints can maybe take over here and just have an insane start to this first half. It's still, it's already a great start. As you can see, University of Missouri can't really afford a fall by. have some Guardians there alongside the Vandals, but they will have uh, the weapons more or less as they're going to take full advantage of mid Saints happily giving that one up as finally the Breach is going to back up into spawn. We'll have a couple dangerous challenges. Paragon picks up Smiley. That's a great start to the round for University of Missouri, but Saints keeping the numbers close here. Seth going to look for a Swing. Only a minute left for University of Missouri to make their move, but exactly there's going to be another pick going out to Caillou. That's a great, great start for University of Missouri. They have to win this round, otherwise it's going to be a very, very rough game for them. Giza going to get stunned up here, going to get pushed by two members. Can he find at least one here? If he finds a couple, will be crucial. Finds one, Piggy will find the trade. The plant will go down as Saints in 2v4. Going to be very, very hard to win this round. Right, and it's going to all be left alone on the side of Seth and his teammate on the raise. And now he's going to have to see what happens here. Seth sees the smoke instinct trying to get through the door. Will do so. But the cross is being held really well from Missouri right now. They're just going to wait and kind of burn as much time as they can, obviously. No reason to overextend with the spike planted. You know St. Clair has to come to you. So we'll see. Utility being thrown down. The engagement from Seth finds one, oh. finds two, can't find the third. But a very good try, nonetheless. And great, great, great effort from Seth. Great try there from Seth. Saints gonna drop around, but still looking very, very good in that game. Let's go back over to the side of a Rainbow Six Siege. Whoever wins this goes to the semifinals and put themselves in a great position to get to a land. The peak comes through from Rapid. Salty Boy gonna find one. Rapid finds one as well. Now Saints have a 4v3 advantage after losing one early on. The Dokubi's gonna use ability there. Now Saints should be able to make a lot of a room here. Jax gonna get hurt. Rapid does go down to the Nitro Cell, but the Resurrect from the Saints should be online there as Saints still sticking together. 
And another dodge, uh, bullet dodged by the Saint as Rapid gets taken down to 1 HP. A minute 20 to work here with a lot of time actually for the Saints as the Salty Boy will get taken down by Big G. That is a huge, huge pick coming out as now Saints. It's going to be hard to get into these sites, but Jax finding, the, for Jax, fi Jax finding these picks on the Thermite has been absolutely incredible for the Saints here to start off this map. Let's see if they can push their advantage. Jax going to find yet another one. That's the third, uh, second kill of the round for him. Now 3v1 scenario is going to be all on uh, this mirror and you have to think for you to yourself Saints definitely starting off hot here in the second round should be able to take this one home the player in Geisha just has to hold that position a little bit of an, uh, I don't want to say overextend because it was a power position that they were kind of told to hold there, but the mute will get cleared out. Just unfortunate on the side for, I believe it was, yeah, Big G, so not able to get that one down. Mad Dog now with the Dokubi in uh, taking the cams, has to shoot his own default, knows the sprays are going to have to come through the bar door, finds one, nice. not able to find the second one, and the cross was being held by Charm. Beautifully played there, and just making sure that you check those doorways to those cap cans. It was what Rapid got injured to earlier in the round. So it was going to be very interesting to see how Sinclair dealt with the cap can, and they didn't deal with it exactly as well <laughs> as I thought, you know, you would have hoped for. But now knowing that it's on the board, and now knowing that Butler brings it, you know, especially when you have the Cade, Jaeger, and Fenrir as well. You might want to think, would IQ be a decent operator to bring here for some of these attacks? Maybe St. Clair not opting to do so, though. It's going to be interesting to see how they can deal with the utility that they have already from the Dokubi, from the Nomad. So, again, it is manageable, obviously not a make or break, but these are some people like IQ that I think personally would be pretty strong here looking at the lineup that Butler's bringing. Without a doubt, and as, as we said uh before this map started, Saints going to be on the attack. If they can find three or four rounds here on this attacking side and take some momentum into the defensive end, that would be a great start to the map for them as they're going to pick up their first round on the offense here. Now Butler going to go back to upstairs there. As we, let's get back into the Valorant game. Saints going to be taking the fifth round there home. Now going to look to defend here as a Paragon going to have that ultimate used by Raze, but Giza is going to be taking that one out early. Comes out the Cypher ult now as this is going to be a hard round for the side of University of Missouri to win, but they're going to get the plant down, but look at Kai. You're going to find a Kalat there onto Piggy and Exo. Does get traded out by Happy Rapid, but it's a 4v2 scenario for the Saints. Happy Rapid finding one more. Seth going to take down Panda there. It's going to be Happy Rapid needing a 1v5 Clutch to bring this one back. Seth gonna TP into a smoke. Smiley will find out when a Saint completely running over their opposition will take a 6 1 lead. And now going back on to Siege, we see that the engagement on Peaceful Window is going to happen. Geisha being breached as well by Jocks on that Thermite, I believe. Yes, there the call was correct. I just was getting the names. But uh, now St. Clair, you know, a Geisha take to work into this exhibition museum. Uh, hold so it is going to be interesting to see they have the first level done but now how are they going to deal with that mirror that looks into drum uh, being held by Raikai and also the Fenrir on the side of Big Chi roaming down below near barbecue yeah they have to be careful for that roam have to spot it out as it's gonna be Corey Rob on this Finka pushing through here will a drone out sees nobody is in there Saints Doing a good job of not falling down too early as Butler has been seeming to find these early pickoffs on the defensive end, but great, great start for them as Bon is gonna try and take a dangerous angle shoot out utility there. Trying to blow up the wall there. As it's gonna be Saints looking to go for a bit of a push. Rapid gonna look for some shots, doesn't find too much as Butler seems to be playing a bit more reserved. Corey is able to spot out one there as the push seems to be coming through for the Saints. They're gonna Thatcher and Thermite that wall immediately. And the bandit isn't uh, anywhere on the side of Butler University. They don't have one, so that wall's gonna get opened up and the First pick comes through from Jocks onto Raikai. That's a great start for the Saints as they try and get themselves into the site here. Still a minute to work with, so don't have to go too, too quickly. But Butler have to be careful here on the defensive and They are down a member. Can Charm spot out the head of that player? I don't think he's going to be able to get an angle on it, but as soon as that player stands up, his head's going to get taken off his shoulders, but Big G is going to find a pick onto Koi Rob, making a 4v4. Actually, Gravy's going to find down Rapid as well, as now it's a 3v4 scenario for the Saints. Still, they have pretty good position here with this door open. Double Mad Dog going to find a couple with that Nitro Cell. Jonesy is going to go down to Salty Boy, but now it's a 1v3 for him as Butler are going to be sitting down on this point, and the swing comes through. They're going to be able to pick up Salty Boy. Round goes over to Butler University after it looked so good for the Saints. 
Right, I mean, a beautiful swing there from Gravy onto the player in Dragon. So it is going to be interesting to see how St. Clair sort of bounce back right now. But on their own map pick right now, down 2-1 to Butler, Butler, not the ideal uh, start. However, again, defensive sided and Butler being known for their defense. So as we see how that ends up, we are going to switch over to Valorant now. 6-1 so far is your score. The swing down from oh Smiley is going to find all three. Are you kidding me, Smiley? Finds the triple, finds the defuse, finds the clutch, and finds the 7-1. Beautiful swing there from Smiley. I was thinking to myself, maybe playing a bit too... Uh, too dangerous with that flash just holding it out even when he's getting swung but the flash hit on all three found a couple with the spray and found the one tap on the last member as saints are just running away with that one up seven one smiley now top ranking after that round with 12 kills in a round saints definitely feeling themselves you can see why they're considered one of if not the strongest team in all of collegiate valorant as they're looking to make their their way into orlando they're gonna need a, one more series after this but it's looking like they're putting themselves in a great position to do so. But let's take a look back over at R6. Baller University on this defensive end. Doing a pretty good job last round of holding out for dear life. That Nitro Cell finding that double kill was really the nail in the coffin. So Saints have to be careful to not get caught by anything like that this time. It's going to be third floor again. One person is outside. So Saints have to be careful of those peaks. One thing we haven't seen so much uh, at all this series has been kind of people running out and looking for the spawn peaks. Not something that's really done too much, but you could definitely pull it out in a round or two. There's going to be the Thermite blowing up that wall. A great start for the Saints as they have that. Thatcher. They also have Corey on this Monty, so might look for an early plant behind that Monty and just try to play the post plant scenario. But Butler don't seem to be too faced. Here's gonna be Corey walking in, making a lot of space here. Gets shot in the back though, still is able to stay alive as it's still 5v5. Legion, those traps are gonna be deadly as Gravy picks up a rapid early on into the round. That's a crucial pick onto the Havana. But Saints looking to play it aggressively no matter what. Pushing in here, Charm gonna look for a pick. There's a player in this room, but Wiz gonna get shot from the side. Jonesy gonna pick up his second of the round here. Gonna look for his third. Nice little turn there from uh, Jonesy. The shots come out here from Corey on this Monty, but now he will find anything. Does find one. Salty Boy finds one as well, but he will get taken out. Gravy now, third kill of the round for him as it's all up to Salty in a 1v3 scenario. And the problem is there, Jonesy just staying on those red stairs, not able to get cleared out. So it's just, it is unfortunate, but he's going to leave way more of a mark onto the players entering into Geisha than St. Clair obviously wanted him to. So a little bit of a tough round there, but now it's getting a little bit dangerous right now. If you're St. Clair, you gotta maybe think, Salty, maybe don't even kind of push this 1v3 with a minute left. I mean, maybe if you find the first pick, that might be interesting, but you might want to just stay outside and kind of take this little tactical timeout right now that St. Clair might need. You gotta get an attack going. You even go as far as to bring the Montang out. Again, a little more of just a showing of desperation there from St. Clair. Hopefully the shield op kind of feeds you more intel than you're able to get so far but it hasn't shown out and it hasn't worked out for the side of St. Clair. So again, very interesting. Butler looking like a really strong defense and the Saints right now, they're just searching for answers. I mean, yeah, they're searching for answers and they can't find any as of right now. Salty Boy still stuck here in this doorway 1v3. Gonna be a basically impossible scenario for him to win it. He has no idea the player has pushed up. Such beautiful timing there from a big G. Salty Boy tried to find it, but Nice, a little kill there for Butler University as they take a 3-1 lead. And they look to be taking an even bigger one at that. Now University of Missouri trying to find something against St. Clair College on the on the Valorant side, but Inkston gonna find an opening frag. Gonna miss some pretty simple shots there, but they have to back up now. Seven Inkston trying to hold this one down as they're gonna be find a couple. Smiley picks up Happy Rabbit, and that's gonna be the end of the round. University of Missouri gonna lose yet another one on this attack as Saints taking 9-1 nine, nine lead. It's first to 13, so they're looking very, very strong on this defensive end, but I, I don't even want to imagine what things they're going to do on attack. These guys have just looked so surgical throughout this entire season, let alone the playoffs so far. 
Big up Smiley. I mean, this kid is absolutely nothing short of amazing. 18 years of age, just showing up rookie season, I believe, on this team as well. I mean, he missed out on the Red Bull Campus Clutch because he wasn't 18 yet. He was 17 years of age. So, again, going to be interesting to see this young prodigy at work for our varsity team. But keep going, young gun, as you uh, light up the scoreboard. Looking on the side of R6 again, this is a round that St. Clair, I'm going to say it, absolutely need. Uh, they okay, cannot afford to go down 4-1 because then the mental starts getting to you on your own map. You start questioning yourself. So right now, St. Clair, you need to do uh, God's work to make it 3-3, but it's got to be the reality here. You definitely don't want to be staring down the barrel of a 4-2 going on to the defending side on your own map pick. Yeah. It's going to make it uncomfortable, and if you can't replicate a very strong defense like his uh, Butler has shown, you're either going to look like an exit through regulation or an overtime. So again, uh, you got to play another map even if you win this. You need to try to find these answers quick. These players might be going through a little bit of a fatigue here. And so they got to try to find answers. Jocks will find to do that as he makes the breach, breach onto Geisha Wall. And so far it is going to be St. Clair to look for the opening into Geisha. Uh, could be is going to use there. Let's see if Saints can push, and as you said, they kind of need this around. Uh, so they're going to look to find the pick early, but you can see the member of Butler is going to be swinging out there. It doesn't want me to swing. Nobody will be taking down Jax, actually. Jock's going to go down. Mad Dog is going to be able to find... Uh, is going to go down as well, so the trade comes through there, but another pick for Big Chi. So, so well so far on this map. It's going to give the Saints the disadvantage and Gravy's going to be able to find Corey. Saints are dropping like flies. Raikai's going to take down Salty Boy and Rapid still on his drone. will get up now and realize the rest of his team has fallen in this 1v4 scenario. Another round the Butler should definitely not be able to lose as they should be going up for one in this map. Right, and this is just such a tough position right now. I mean, if you're rapid, again, you can take this entry, but you guys have talked stuff over before. It seems like right now they just need a switch up. Hopefully they can kind of find a round, though, to make it maybe not a 5-1. That would be the worst possible case scenario. Rapid knows of the player peeking through reception. So now it is going to be rapid with the clutch of a lifetime to try to get his team back into it. Low health as well now from the engagement. Swing comes through from the extension from Pantry. And it's going to be Butler to do an amazing job to clean that round up. And they go up five to, sorry, four, four to one. one now. Yeah, great, great job from Butler there as they are looking to put themselves in the great scenario. Now it's going to be a 1v1 here, but Giza will find the pick. 11, one round, <laughs> also dominant here from the Saints, as they're two rounds away from taking the map, and they're trying to finish the series in swift fashion, as they often do. If you ever watch the Saints play, they're usually winning every map, 13-1, 13-2. Uh, just a great, a great showing from them here, and they're definitely going to be feeling themselves after this series, one series away from making the land, if you're a Saints fan, that's one to definitely look forward to. Maybe they could even win that one out in Orlando, but uh, it's going to be, uh, speaking of a bit of a harder time, our Saints on the uh, R6 side, definitely struggling. They're down 4-1, and uh, they have to, they really have to turn it up a notch if they want to make it back into that map. Well, again, going into this, this was a very big possibility, obviously, as we will get back to that soon. Of course, we can focus on Valorant for a little bit now, but... You know, you got to hope for these Saints. Hopefully they can get it back on the R6 side. Looking back on the Valorant side, though, I mean, this varsity team has been nothing short of brilliant this match, as they are usually every match. And now the first engagement going through. Zila not able to find the shots. And now Smiley trying to just see if he can get this spike planted. Spike planted. That's going to be Giza blinded now, has to kind of hold this corner and it's going to be an awkward swing. Happy Rabbit finding the headshot will be the undoing of Giza there. And now Caillou's gonna have to take an engagement very soon through these boxes. And it's gonna be a three or five scenario for the Saints, but they still have great positioning here. Seth, I throw out a smoke here to the side. Let's see, it's gonna be all on this. Caillou, can he find a couple? No pick, he's actually gonna jump around the corner. It's gonna be a round going over to University of Missouri. The one thing with the Saints is when they go up big, you kind of see Instinct flying in there with the double satchels. They tend to do that sometimes, a little bit of trolling. So you definitely know what they're feeling themselves. They know 
that they have no real chance of losing this map, but now they're just gonna try have a little bit of fun with it. You can't get mad at them for that, but let's take a look back at the look of R6, and it's not looking good for our Saints. They're down five members to one. It's all on Jogs here, and it's gonna be another round. More than likely, go over to Butlers. They should be going up 5-1 in this half flawless round. That's gonna be a heartbreaker for the Saints, but now the sides are flipped. They're gonna need to be practically flawless to bring this one back. Yeah, it's just tough, right? I mean, right now the Saints gotta get a grip. You're looking down 5-1, you are two rounds potentially away from being eliminated to an Orlando land that you would actually think that if you beat Butler, given the competition you're looking at, this was a very, you would think, very winnable uh, rest of the tournament if St. Clair can just get over the one hurdle that was Butler. But now, focusing back onto Valorant Giza with the pickup, and Piggy is trying to find Stun A. Giza and Caillou with just picks of their own, absolutely cleaning up, leaving Piggy in a 1v4 scenario. Finds the first on a set, but the trade should come out nevertheless immediately from Caillou. Beautiful plays there from St. Clair. Good crosses being held, and when you have that advantage, it doesn't really matter. You can just set up the crosses and hope to hit the trade. Do exactly just that, and the Saints move themselves up on match point. And they should be able to win that one. Timeout does come out from University of Missouri, but they have a save around. Saints have a full force. It should be all she wrote, and he should be taking that first map with relative ease. It should be a 13-2, but you can never speak to early esports, as you said. Valorant R6 doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how big of a lead you have, anything is possible. And Saints are going to need some of that possibility here in this R6 matchup. They're down 5-1. Will be on the defensive end. It's going to be interesting how a Butler choose to attack this one. And what's interesting about the Saints is these guys are a little bit of a mental team. So when they do kind of get down, sometimes they do put themselves in a little bit of a hole. They need to try to work their way back out, though. Got to put it on rapid, the coach. How are you going to will your team to get back into this game? So far, standing strong. They're trying to burn time. The player on the Dokubi, though, rushes through, and it's going to be Salty Boy with the first pickup onto Big G. Huge as the Dokubi goes down. Corey finds another one on the gravy. All is well on the defensive side so far. When St. Clair have the 5-3 man advantage. Two minutes left to go as well. They can opt to just kind of play patient, pull back, not give anything up. They can just turtle up now. They do have the man advantage. And with the buck and the Doka be gone, the execute is going to be very hard to do for the rest of the round. Yeah, and as you said, they're a big mental, mental team. One of these rounds, if it just goes their way, could be a huge mental swing. We could definitely see them playing on top of their game. We're going to see the Ash push in here. You have to be careful. We'll be able to find a kit pick, but Corey is going to be able to find a trade onto Josie. It's now it's a 4v2 scenario for the Saints here. Butler finally able to get inside a little bit, but even after that, choose to go back mind. out. The diffuser is in hand, but still Saints. Minute 30 left, all the way across the map, they just need to hold on to the bomb site. This should be a very, very hard round for Butler to win, but they're gonna give it a shot to say the least. Ash gonna go for the swing here. Not gonna be able to find anything as the swing comes through here from Raikai as well. Not we find anything. Saints can just burn a bit more time and just take the good gun, gun trades. This, ra this round should be more than likely going in their favor. Right, and now with the ace going down from, I believe, the smoke, plus a couple of shots coming through, it will be, I believe, Rapid who got the pickup with the Mossberg in hand. And now it's going to be left to Mad Dog. Again, a simple reminder we did see the dual screen pop up. If you want to see all the other gameplay, raw gameplay streams, exclamation mark streams in the chat, should pull those up for you. Mad Dog. There's not going to be much pulling up yeah. as, uh, you, you know, you might pull up to four guns blazing right at you. So you might want to just kind of sit there. Yeah, you're a nice little cute punch hole and honestly run the time out just to make sure tactical little time out that Mad Dog can do right now. His team can say some words, you know, stay calm. This isn't a very strong sign. Obviously, you know, like, you lose this round. You're still up 5-2. There's going to have to be a lot to go wrong for you not to take this game. Jocks, though, making it not any easier. We'll find the headshot on a Mad Dog. The Saints pick up their second round and their first on, hopefully, what is a mental swing on the defense. Yeah, great start for them. They can be flawless on the defense and play perfect R6. The map could be a very, very close one at that. Still, I believe, far from over in my opinion. I think if Saints can string together a couple more rounds here in a row, 
Butler are really going to be shaking in uh, their boots. But let's see the defensive side. Saints going to go for Legion, a uh, castle. Couldn't see the rest. That's going to be Jaeger, Mute, and Smoke. So pretty strong defensive lineup here as they're going to be set up on this a second floor. We saw Saints struggle to attack into this one. You'd have to imagine Butler going to have the same sort of issues as on the defensive side. Both teams seem to definitely be strong. Yeah, it's going to be interesting right now as we get into this exhibition. The UCM hold, hopefully St. Clair able to show out on top because if they even give out one round, if they just give up one measly round to Butler on this attack, they're staring down the barrel of a match point, series point, and season point. All of their you know, dreams and aspirations on the year are going to be cut short a little sooner than they were hoping for. So they obviously don't want that to happen. They need to try to be damn near flawless. And so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of change they can make. Jox has definitely kind of kept the team mentally uh, up as he is still 6-6, six and six, able to kind of boast his own as he's been holding his own so far throughout the game. But there have been pieces that are missing right now for the Saints. And again, Siege is not a one-player game. You need all five doing the work. The balcony wall will get blown open. Corey Rob with an aggressive swing but no one peeking there. It was just vacated now. They're probably going for the next wall on the balcony. Yep, exactly. Gravy should have the vertical cleared out from the bottom floor onto bathroom. And it should be the clean breach coming through that second wall. Yeah, but it's gonna be a great start for the side of Butler as they were able to pick off Charm to start off the round on the yeah, you're just gonna find any picks before he fell down. Now it's gonna be Butler who have the advantage, they look to make their way in a side and they have a shield as well, Gravy will be going down though to Cory. that's a great, great way to get back into this round if you're Saints, Cory Rob gonna look for a swing on the outside, they won't find anything as a Jaeger is gonna be eating up these nays as Jones is gonna look for something but just can't find anything rapid gonna be on a bit of a big flank, can he find any picks there? Salty Boy on this Legion has to be holding down that position, Corey with a shotgun letting anyone walk into his sights will go down rapid will actually find a Mad Dog, that's a great pick again a Saint gonna have the numbers advantage here but as I say that a Key Rob does a fall, Corey Rob does fall down Jones is gonna be taking that one. Some shots come out though onto the Thermite. A Salty Boy is gonna be able to find the pick there. Rapid does get traded out. Salty Boy is gonna be on one HP now. It's gonna be a 2v1 for the Saints. Jones, he does fall down. Great, great team fighting from them. It's gonna be Jax and Salty Boy against Big Chi. Big Chi definitely been the strongest player here for Butler, but Jocks will find that when the Saints come back in that round, make it a 5-3 game, and look to bring themselves back into this map. Hopefully a little bit of a mental swing. Jocks have a day. The one issue that I have on that round, and I don't mean to put my guy on blast, but Rapid there, again, roaming with smoke. Not a usual roamer that you see a lot of, and it kind of shows because he died with three toxic uh, babes in in, uh, in yeah. inventory. So again, you know when you have a plant nearly going down and you're not throwing any smoke nades at it when you have three It is a little bit questionable again not able to do so because the positioning that was uh, That he had to stay and of course if you overextend you're just gonna be a lamb to the slaughter from the guy holding the cover on the plant But again, I want to see those toxic canisters used a little more often from him on the smoke I saw him doing it a little bit in chalet as well but again, they have their moments. So it's been interesting. Not usually used to seeing Rapid on the smoke, but something that he's trying out. Jocks right now bringing out the Thorn, not a usual operator that I see a lot of from him as well. The Fenrir from Salty Boy, obviously the ban on him is most definitely usually always in order. So a little bit of a lineup change in general right now for the Saints. They're just kind of seeing maybe, you know, maybe they've seen something that Butler do on the attack. Hopefully they think they can take advantage of it by bringing these new ops. And we'll kind of see what Butler sets up to deal with it yeah it looks like saints on their map pick definitely have this defense figured out as butler just can't seem to find a way in and, uh, you know as i said it's gonna be a close game saints getting a couple of rounds going here if they can win this third one it's gonna be a tough spot for butler now because you need to find an offensive round to close this map out at least to push it to overtime they need one of those so they're gonna be opening uh, all of those uh, breaches up jacks you can see Jock sitting under there. Gonna look for some really shots as they have a ping on a player. Kai gonna look for the peak there, but the swing won't come through as 
Butler taking their time to push in here, not going too quickly, but as I say that Rapid is going to fall down instantly on that smoke again, won't get any of those canisters out as you said, definitely going to have to play a bit more safer on that smoke to utilize his utility to the most, but we saw this last round or a couple of rounds ago where Butler got the early advantage but just couldn't find anything off that, but as I say that beautiful swing there from Gravy takes down Salty Boy, 5v3 scenario now for Butler as they desperately need to take this offensive round. And you know, uh, again, it's just a really sad start to see from St. Clair. You cannot afford to lose that Fenrir and that smoke early because the Fenrir can now no longer switch between which of his f knots are active and the smoke obviously taking the entry pick does not have any of those canisters. Jocks will fall now as well. And it's looking like this is the one round that Butler needed to most definitely bring up match point. The vertical angle seen from Charm, but he will not be able to land the shots. Corey robbed. Corey Rob robbed of his life there from Big Chi as the pick does come through. The Close. crouch peak from Charm, but it will be Raikai to finish things out onto Kitchen. Yep, and it's going to be Butler on a match point looking to finish the season for the Saints. Let's take a look around at some other games. Bottom left corner now, St. Clair College going on, going up against Cumberland University in Call of Duty. Winner of this does go to the LAN, I believe, in Orlando. Yep. So that's going to be a very, very intense matchup. And on the bottom right corner, we have our Saints going into map two against University of Missouri. They do drop the first pistol round, but that's at this point kind of to be expected. So... If you want to check out each stream on its own for just pure pure raw gameplay, exclamation mark streams in the chat. But if not, you can stick here with us as we go through each game. And, you know, we commentate over them. We have a good time. We try to enjoy ourselves as the most... The game closest to finishing is probably the R6 game. We got Butler on match point 6-3 against St. Clair. And St. Clair trying so desperately to bring this map back and send it to overtime. Right, I mean, we're now looking at the season for R6 at St. Clair. You, you know, through this whole year, the grind, everything's been going down. Potentially the last game for a couple of, uh, uh, you know, these players on the collegiate scene, depending on who's graduating or who's not. I don't necessarily know. But the whole point is that right now, everything that you've been working up to could end very shortly. St. Clair going to have to pull off the perfect run in order to even get it to overtime, let alone win the game. Butler looking to kind of snuff stuff out. And if you are Butler, you can either choose to try to do this very aggressively or slow and methodically. The pressure is not on you anymore. You have all the time to figure it out. You can kind of stick surgical. Salty Boy going to be the first person inside of office behind that desk. They look to point out. I believe it was the Buck who was kind of moving through. Oh no, sorry, not the Buck. It was the Yana, the Gemini replicator to come through the Gemini clone. So the intel should be already up that it is going to be the Legion sitting behind that second floor desk. And now that is going to be the first person who they look to clear out. Going to be surgical and it is going to be Butler who finds the first three. Saints falling by the wayside. They've had a really, really good season so far. Rapid finds one, potentially one of his last kills of the entire season an entire year for St. Clair but right now they need a miracle in order to get this round back potentially looking at the last round here for our boys in red so we will see charm one and seven hasn't had a very good game so far can be the difference maker right now to cause the mental swing holding that angle through drum needs to find the pick but it's not going to happen Raikai absolutely ripping him to shreds rapid it's all on the coach all on the captain but that's going to be all she wrote the cleanup comes in from drum Saints go down 0-2 and Butler moves on to the semifinals absolutely deserved they played that absolutely brilliantly and it seems that uh, St. Clair bringing it uh, Butler to Skyscraper may have just, you know, they may have bitten off a little more than they could chew. Yeah, Butler, congratulations to them. They're going to be moving on to the semifinals and putting themselves in a great position to make it to that Orlando land and take it all home as Saints were definitely one of their stronger opponents that they're going to see in this tournament. But unfortunately for, for the Saints here, that's going to be the end of the season for them. But now let's take a look into this Call of Duty game. We have our Saints taking on... Cumberland, as it's going to be Priestley, KB, Nacho Slayer, Brandon up against Cal, Camp, Connor, and Crayon. It's actually going to be Cumberland taking the early advantage here, up 90 points uh, to 8, as it's going to be Saints who are in red, and it's going to be Cumberland who are in green from the look of things as Saints 
are one of the one of if not the strongest teams in collegiate call of duty kb definitely their superstar player here kind of a rookie that came from nowhere and has been absolutely dom dominating both tier two and the collegiate scene so gonna be a lot of pressure on our saints here to win this one but cumberland putting up a great a great fight to start this first map they're gonna be up seven as we're gonna be changing hard points Right, I mean, so far, there's not really, you know, you look at this team, and I mean, all you're looking at it is a bunch of excellence right now. All four of these players have done so well throughout this entire season, and they are exactly in the position they deserve to be one series away from land. But they are going to have to get themselves back into it right now, because, again, not usual that we see our Saints kind of falter in these respawn game modes. So, going to be interesting to see how the Saints come back. I don't think I've even seen them drop a single hardpoint game this uh, entire yeah. season. Yeah. <laughs> so going to definitely be interesting to see if Cumberland can take a hard point game off of the Saints. How will they bounce back? Only time will tell. Nacho trying to hold the area between forklift and tank and now has to just try to hold this pixel down. Not able to happen though. Crayon able to... Actually, that was a team kill. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought he was going to get the pick now. KB with the double kill as well. Tries to find the third. Nice and he's going shots. to do just that with that MCW in hand. And now... St. Clair climbing back into this thing as they've now tightened their uh, their deficit. Yeah, it's only going to be a 10-point ten, ten lead here for Cumberland. Saints have very, very good uh, spawns here. They should get onto this hard point in just a second. It's going to be Brandon on that one and Priestley on the other side of the map. 1v4, going to find a couple. KB going to be helping him out there as well. It's going to be a great, great start to this hard point defense for the Saints. Priestley is still all the way across the map there. Does finally fall, but Saints have the very, very good uh, spawn advantage. So it's going to be one push here from Cumberland, really, to take over this side. KB going to find the opening pick onto camp. Going to find another one through the wall. KB is just spraying them down. Cal will find one, but all Saints are overlooking Brandon here, who's sitting inside this hard point, getting the points for the Saints. The push finally comes through. Cal gonna throw out that flashbang. He'll flash himself as well, as he's gonna have to just contest here for a couple of seconds. Good job from Cal to not over-aggress and kind of withhold Saints pressure. He, has, he will be going down to Brandon. These final 10 seconds will go over to the Saints as they take a huge lead after this hard point. Right, I mean, it was just beautifully done by Brandon just sitting in the bathroom hall able to just kind of hold that prone and make Cumberland kind of all advance towards the players kind of just tighten up and they all play together there to force the win on the trade and hold that hard point down for the max amount of seconds that you possibly could. So again, it is going to be now Cumberland who do take control of this next hard point. St. Clair are going to have to do some work here to get this one back. Are in the lead, but that is quickly falling. However, the hard point neutral right now is no one is contesting it. Going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. Top. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, Cumberland doing a great job of just making sure the Saints can get onto this uh, side as Cam's going to find a pick onto Nacho Slayer there. They're going to be going for a double flank here around Priestley though. We'll be able to pick up Cal Crayon, picks up one onto Slayer, but Priestley going to find one back and it's going to be all red in the kill feed. Saints going to take control of this hard point for at least a couple of seconds. Priestley got a triple kill as well, which can be a great, great start for the Saints. The next hard point is going to be perfectly set up for the Saints as it's all the way behind them and you can see Cumberland are going to have a very very tough job of pushing through here. KB won't find any in the spawn but will respawn all the way in the back of the map. Saints looking to take control of the hard point here as they're going to be very very close to closing up the map. They can get a lot of time going here but they don't even look to touch the hard point just yet. They want to find these kills early as finally KB will move into the hard point. Cumberland moving as four. A trade comes out for him from not just lay on to one. Priestley finds a second. That's huge huge picks for the Saints camp. Going to pick up Priestley as honor Gonna look for the shots there will be taken down to four hp as kb finally is gonna find that one gonna step off the point for just a second but his teammates got his back brandon takes down honor saints gonna be getting back into this hard point they're gonna look to keep the score going and it is going to be KB and Priestley who are combined for an absolutely atrocious 51 kills so far in this game. Both of them doing so well and just adding to that as we speak. St. Clair now with an app, you know, it seems like they've found their footing with an absolutely dominant lead so far. Just about to cross that 200 point. And now we see that has been done. So, Cumberland, you need to get back into this game. And you only have, I believe, now... 50 points uh, yeah, to work with. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just going to be tough, right? So, the 
hard point in courtyard, and now the timer as that hard oh point stays dude. neutral just kind of dips and dives as well. St. Clair able to find the control over it now, so the points start building up. Only 250 needed, and they're only 40 away and counting. Cumberland needs to make a move, and they need to make a move quick. Yeah, they do, as Saints are holding this down so, so beautifully. But Honor going to be here on the flank. Cal does take down Brandon, so going to be a kill as well from camp as finally it seems like Cumberland have set their foot down are going to be able to take control of this middle hard point but this middle hard point is so hard to lock down as Brandon just swings through finds one finds two onto Crayon now can the Saints get some more time here Cumberland they have to make a decision now do they want to contest this point or do they want to rotate over to next it looks like it's going to be Cal going for a solo push here as the rest of his team might look to rotate over to the next side but how much uh, Time can you really give up here? Saints going to be in a very, very good scenario. They're finding all the kills. It's going to be all up to Honor here to find the crucial picks. But it looks like three kills. Going to go down to the Saints. Honor drops the Saints. Going to be 10 points away from taking this hard point. I don't even think Cumberland will be in time to make the contest here. Five seconds and counting. Four, three, and it, two, and one. The picks come out. as It's going to be 249 for the Saints here, actually. They're not going to be able to complete the map just yet. But they do have the good spawns. They should be able to come back in here. Nacho say are going to look to find one early on we'll throw out that nade no kills coming through us saints taking their time brandon gonna find a pick onto camp crayon gonna go down as well that should be all she wrote priestly gonna go down honor dies as well kb gonna find the fourth onto cal that's gonna be the map going over to the saints as they take it in pretty dominant fashion well even if the saints didn't take it there again the other thing to think keep in factor of was just the match timer in general right i mean cumberland would have had to hold that control for the entire time in order to even like contest and get to the next one i mean the saints could have opted if they really even wanted to to just let cumberland take all of those points and just camp the next hard point switch right so again it was kind of a lose-lose situation on the side of cumberland st Clair doing a really good job as they go up one game a great start for the saints that series is best of five and as expected our saints on that hard point game mode as you said <laughs> haven't seen them lose great job from them but now it's going to be coming up search and destroy kind of more a valorant type style of game mode so that's a game mode they struggle in most but let's speaking of valorant saints up six one smiley actually not gonna find the kill there but we'll be able to make it out of this life it's gonna be a save round for university of missouri as they don't have too much to work with smiley should be able to pick up the chamber here actually it, it is a gecko as gecko is gonna be able to, able to find the first pick onto smiley great start for the side of university of missouri but still they're kind of lacking on the weapon department saints probably still feeling very confident about this round as Miss Piggy is here. It's Caillou going to sneak through here. Finds one. Not going to be able to find the second onto Paragon. However, the trade comes out as Panda picks up Giza. Now Saints might be panicking a bit. 4v2 situation for University of Missouri. Seth going to have to go ballistic on this Viper. Will pick up one, but he will get traded out by Paragon. The trade comes out for Mingston now, who's stuck in a 1v2 scenario. Going to start the defuse. Throws out a nade as well. As he should be able to find the Gecko here. Will find the shots there now in a 1v1 scenario. Has that ultimate as well if he wants to use it. Has 10 bullets to work with Panda gonna be flanking around but pros don't fake can Instinct get it to go the shot's gonna come out from Panda take wow. him down to six HP but Instinct playing it perfectly will take him down third kill of the round as Saints go up 7-1 with the clutch from Instinct nothing short of brilliance from Instinct there you know pros don't fake gets the halfway on the diffuser sticks you know hops off finds the pick as well you just couldn't write it any better I mean shades of a uh, charm when we saw him in chalet doing that so again really beautiful job there from St. Clair and they go up 7-1 just such a dominant showing so far from St. Clair you have to think that they're looking to just get out of the server quick if this keeps up yeah without a doubt they're uh, expecting to be dominant they are dominant and they're going to be pretty happy with their performance so far but job is still far from a finish it's going to be a full buy i believe coming out from university of missouri if not that then a scuffed buy at that smiley going to be holding down this street position as it looks like university of missouri want to get out of here quickly they're going to be pushing through the happy rabbit will find the trade onto caillou as smiley's going to pick up axel will get traded out as well though so the spike should be going down and there it is it is planted down 3v3 scenario saints gonna have to play the retake again they have uh ray's instinct on the giga flank here along side uh, just by himself on the flank panda gonna be in this corner he has to clear that one out Seth gonna look to push through again as instinct I don't know if he has any idea that panda could be in this corner panda's gonna be able to find one instinct finds the trade onto that one the ultimate comes out from the raise the chamber is gonna be right around the corner I think he spotted him out beautiful shot from mixing Giza gonna find the shot across the map onto Paragon as well as that's gonna be a great retake from the Saints put themselves up 8-1 and a great scenario to finish out the map
And you know, you could have thought there, maybe Instinct didn't even have to pull out the ultimate, but it was literally a round confirmer. A great scenario and a great place as well to use it as you do have that splash damage that can come out there, obviously. So probably no better uh, place position-wise to use that ultimate if you want to confirm that round there. And even if you think it's a little bit of a troll play, I just think Instinct personally played that really, really smart. Yeah. So St. Clair go up 8-1. to one, And I mean, ever since falling from that pistol round, they're actually going to if you see the board win the conversion uh, round as well so not something that you know you usually see there uh, of course but again it's just it is what it is and uh, st. Clair so far they've been absolutely cooking it looks like University of Missouri are sticking to this a push I don't think they want to go anywhere else as they're gonna be pushing through smiley with a beautiful smoke there now Seth gonna drop down finds a couple should be able to find a third there it is Seth can he find the ace for himself no Kai is gonna steal that one away Panda finds the trade but Seth gets his fourth kill of the round blink and you'll miss it Saints up 9-1 as they look to take this map with a very 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 big scoreline I was going to bring up some stats is the fact that Lotus is a 54% attacker win rate map boasting the most attack like the most attacker friendly map out of the entire rotation for North American events in the last 90 days but what I will say right now is I don't think it matters what side St. Clair's on they're just absolutely having their way with Missouri and you have to remember just how impressive this is because Missouri themselves they aren't like any slack offs they made this quarterfinal for a reason they've they've you know made the playoffs for a reason they, they're not a bad team on paper st Clair are just so much you know more it seems advanced though as i mean i, I don't want to say necessarily you know better is a <laughs> term that's you know a little looked down upon but i mean i mean it is. I, you just got to state facts over feelings here st Clair just have an amazing team an amazing roster and you can just see from the chemistry they just gel so well together Going back on the COD side now, St. Clair with a win in the first round of SND. Something that I always point out when I do see these COD matches is that SND is the Saints' weakest game mode. So again, they do come back and win the hard point uh, for the first map, which honestly I really thought was interesting. I saw Cumberland have the lead there for yeah. a little, and I was like, "Wow, that's scary. That's like something I almost never see." So it, I thought maybe you know if Cumberland can contest them on hard point, it'll be interesting. Maybe they take the SND off of them, but they're going to be fine themselves down around to start so not the way Cumberland want to open up we'll see what changes they make yeah we saw the, them last time against Akron they were up 4-2 in the first SD and then they just lost four in a row kind of a loss of composure so let's see if our Saints can stay composed here as we said winner of this game does go to the land and it looks like Saints want to go pretty badly the uh, Priest is going to be able to find the first pick onto Cal first to six in the search and destroy and that's still stun there onto camp but the shot won't uh, follow through as Cumberland struggling to find anything on the offense. Saints playing great defensively so far. And it's it's a same kind of game mode to type of Valorant and R6. Just a lot more face, fast pace here in Call of Duty as our Saints look to be on point here. Nacho say are going to pick up one as well as now Saints put themselves in a 4v2 scenario. There's going to be Crayon on a mod, uh, crazy flank coming out onto Brandon. Will pick that one up. 3v2 scenario still very winnable for Cumberland Saints. Need to not have any loss of composure. But it's going to be only camp here near the bomb as 27 seconds and taking takes 5 seconds to get the plant down not a lot of time to work here he will pay, be able to pick up the bomb and it looks like the call here from Cumberland's to go over towards that B site but Saints have a couple members pretty close still the plant should be able to come through in time as it's going to be going down right now Saints have no idea it's happening but as soon as they hear it come through you're going to see everyone on the minimap rush over here Priestley is going to look for some shots going to be a 2v2 here the trade comes out as Priestley finds one KB does go down still Crayon going to be in a 1v2 scenario the kill will come out from Priestley. Great round for him, I believe. Maybe even an A says that's going to be a great round for the Saints. They go up 2-0 and they're looking very, very strong in this SD. Right, I mean, you've just summarized it absolutely perfectly, Theo. There's no other way to say it. They're looking very strong right now, and it's going to be so hard to kind of break that flow when St. Clair gets into that flow state on the COD side of things. Yeah. 
it's just they are one of the hardest, if not the hardest team in collegiate to uh, break, probably apart from uh, if I'm thinking right off the top of my head, Northwood probably. Yeah, but, Northwood. You know, other than you know, other than that, I mean, uh, honestly, there's no again harder opponent right now in Cumberland's way that uh, to to break this flow state from. So it's going to be interesting to see how St. Clair uh, keep going, and interesting to see how Cumberland. You know, you're looking down, you're not out, but again, the mental's got to start kind of getting to you. You need to find a round right now in this SD, this being the Saints' least dominant game mode. Because if you lose this, you're just looking to take the Saints on in control. And I mean, you do. I, that's, yeah, that's not the game plan ideally for if you want to go to Orlando. So again, it is going to be the Saints that need to try to close this one out. And it's going to be Neat Cumberland who need to try to find themselves back in. KB not looking, to, not looking to give them any chances as he cuts down the first Nacho with the second as well, playing around boxes. And now Camp has to try to make a play behind the bomb chassis. He is going to try to hit Priestley up, but then the drop shot not going to find anyone. Has to make the rotation as he is trying to just play for his life here simply. The 1v4 scenario, almost impossible against our Saints roster. Yeah. But again, you know, crazier things have happened. Camp will need to have the clutch of his lifetime if he even wants it. But it seems like that won't happen. With 20 seconds left, he's most likely KD, just yeah. going to kind of camp out, bait KD, and him and the team are probably just going to have a talk for these last 30 seconds or yeah. about 15 about what they can change up and what they want to expect down 3-0 now. Yeah, camp not even going to try the the one before. No. As you said, probably just going to take that time to talk over with this team, guys. We need to, we need to f fix up and fix up quickly. We're down 3-0 already. Halfway maybe through the map if Saints continue at this pace. So we need to slow them down somehow. And on the look of the things of Valorant, looks like Saints gonna drop another pistol round. But Giza has the plant down, has the 1v2, is sitting down in trees. So let's see how he decides to play this one. 1v3, I apologize. It's gonna be very hard now. His position, oh, doesn't have the trigger discipline. And shoots just a tiny bit early. Finds a couple no though. We need one more headshot oh. by Happy Rabbit. Knows exactly where it is. You definitely have to think to yourself, if Giza held off for a little bit and let those other members that were on more HP walk through, find the shots on them early. I don't think University of Missouri had any idea he was sitting down there in tree, but it's gonna be another pistol round going over to University of Missouri. Saints just can't seem to pick that one up. Yeah, and I mean, you know, such a little mistake that just costs you the round, but again, it's such a hard scenario. Giza played that, like, if it couldn't be a 10 out of 10, he played it at a 9.5 out of 10 there. I mean, hits the shots on the first two, there's not really much you can ask for on the third. It's just such a tough matchup and not one that you ideally want to end up in on the side of St. Clair. But no worries there as they are still up 10 to 3, I believe, the score being. And now as we transition over to COD, it is going to look like the talk with Cumberland did work out for now. Now at least because they have the first two picks on none other than Priestley and KB so right now it, it should be Cumberland that try to work themselves back into it Brandon with one but now has to find a 1v3 clutch in his own right yeah it's gonna be very hard to pull this one off Cumberland gonna have the post plan scenario Brandon gonna find a second but it is seven and a half seconds to find the defuse here in COD so doesn't have much time to work with we'll actually find the third but it's gonna be still so so hard to play you can see he's desperately trying to find the last member of Cumberland who's just hiding away camp will make sure that the defuse doesn't come through and now there's just simply not enough time a great attempt here from brand he's gonna get shot in the back might even win this 1v1 look for it as, no won't be able to find that one a nice round from Cumberland they finally on the attacking side will be able to pick up their first run of the of the of the match <laughs> Right, and I mean, you know, it looked close on paper coming down to the 1v1, but I'm going to be honest with you, that was just Cumberland being absolutely precise in their movement and in their shots. They were able to find the first two picks immediately, and I mean, I don't really necessarily know what the percentage is on how many SND rounds are going to be won versus lost when you have the first two picks, but I'm assuming it's close to 90%. Uh, so again, a really good job there from Cumberland to get that round on the board. Looking on to St. Clair, the 1v1 is going to have to come out. Seth playing around the wall, has to find the pick with the pistol. Will he be able to do so? Yes, he will. Able to put St. Clair up 11-3, to and now it is looking like all stops are going to have to come out if Missouri want to extend this series to another map. Yeah, that's going to be very rough for Missouri. Now with Saints, even after dropping the pistol round, just come back 
in the bonus and just take it down. Cal gonna cross, gonna get taken down early and Camp is dead as well. Saints, after dropping too early in the last round, gonna be the ones to pick up the first two picks here. The plant's gonna go down as they're gonna be playing this post man. They just seem to take this A site so effortlessly as Cumberland just cannot put up a fight. And with 35 seconds and ticking, they might throw a attempt at this. Crayon and Honor gonna double peek this, but Brandon just holding down this doorway. Priestly gonna lay down some early fire. Will get taken down to 1 HP, but is able to play stay alive. Not just gonna find one. It's gonna be all on Crayon. He's gonna get pushed from all angles. The Saints gonna find that one, put themselves up for one, and they're gonna be a couple rounds away from taking the map. And speaking of being close to taking the map. Our Saints are on map and match point here against University of Missouri. They're going to have the full buys coming through as University of Missouri just can't afford what they would like. This could be the last round coming out for our Saints and they're going to put themselves in a great scenario to win this map. But let's see how they decide to attack this one. It looks like an a push might be coming through. They, they're going to leave the spike and spawn as I think they're feeling very, very confident about this one. Yeah, we're just gonna see right now if St. Clair can quickly close this one out. I believe that was... Is that, okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't know what, exactly what's going on there. Oh, are my, you, god. oh my god, are you kidding me? He pulls out the jump, <laughs> looks at himself, finds the 3k. He said, St. Clair stream, look at me in the in-game chat. And then he finds the double to send Missouri home. Are you kidding me right now? There's, okay, sorry. The switch is so sudden. As we get back into s and I'll definitely talk about that later. Priestly with a kill on to KB and then to Cal himself, but it does not matter as the whole team falls by the wayside there. Okay, hold on. Just pause for a minute there. Pause for Caillou! What what was that? <laughs> You're gonna pull out the dro the drone? Tell the St. Clair stream, look at me. Our observer on the side of TJ does not disappoint. He definitely puts it on to him and uh, captures what might be the funniest ending to a game I've ever seen. Yeah. And the send Missouri home as well. The disrespect. But at the end of the day, St. Clair were just the better team on the day. Yeah. They move on to their semifinals match, one match away from their seeing their own finals, hopefully taking that beautiful, beautiful title home. But... Right now, switching on to the COD side of things on match point, it is going to be St. Clair that need to find the round in order to move it to control. Cumberland don't want that to happen, but they're going to have to do so down a man advantage now. Yeah, great start for the Saints, but Brandon is going to be going down. You can see Cumberland playing with a lot more aggressiveness here now, looking for the picks, but somehow Priestley is fully uncontested on this B side. It looks like Saints might be going for the kills here. Not looking to get the plant down as both members from Cumberland are stuck, stack, stacked on top of each other, but Saints are the ones on attack they should be able to get this plant down with the relative ease kb is going to spot them out and should give Priestley the green light to plant this one down at b as cumberland playing very very scared in this corner the comeback it's going to be very hard to pull off in this round the plant does go down 44 seconds and ticking here for cumberland to come back and win this 2v2 to keep themselves in this map and not go down to match point they're going to look to push through early here Priestley and kb though playing for their lives. Have the plant down, but Priestley gonna take a very, very aggressive angle there. Still will be able to stay alive. KB, though, will find one onto honor. Priestley does go down to Cal, so it's a 1v1 scenario here, but you can see KB knows he has so much time to play with. Does spot out the enemy, and now he's gonna just be running for his life. Cal needs to find the defuse, needs to find it quickly. He's, he's gonna be on that B side. The defuse is coming through. I don't think KB has any idea that that's the case, and the defuse should be able to come through. There it is. Nice little not fake there from Cal as he gets the bomb defusing gonna give Cumberland the second round of the, of the game. I mean, you just leave St. Clair there just scratching their heads a little bit, but again, it is the risks that need to be taken if you want to see the next map on a 1-1 split. Cumberland needs to make some hero plays there, and, you know, they were able to pull it out just yeah. one time. So, so far, St. Clair, tighten up the bootstraps, get yourselves locked in, hopefully you finish it off here and move it into control with a 2-0 lead. KB looking to do so, chucking the utility, no one hit by the frags, the swings are going to come out any second now, Camp trying to find one off the stairs, finds one, can't get the drop shot to go though, KB cuts him down on the refrag. As it's gonna be Saint on the post plant scenario, I believe the plant comes down from Cumberland, so Saints have to move quickly, but they're playing this very, very passive 
Nacho Slayer moving all the way across the map as this 27 seconds and ticking now. Saints need to find the retake quickly here as Cumberland has somehow put themselves in a great scenario to take this round. I don't think Saints will have enough time to find all the refrags here. Nacho Slayer gonna be able to find one as Brandon does not find the second with 12 seconds and ticking. Then you get on this bomb quickly, but it's gonna be another pick on me out. That's gonna be another round going over to Cumberland University as Saints just play the retake too slowly as they start to drop like flies. Cumberland doing a great, great job on the attack and the plant down quickly as they've won two in a row now. Well, I mean, there you go. You know, when you sort of get to this point where you could see your season ending very soon on the side of Cumberland, sometimes these collegiate teams, they start showing out. They start putting literally everything they can into it because they have to or else it's their season. Everything they've worked up for this entire year Sadly, we've had to say goodbye to a couple of these Saints teams recently in these playoffs, but they're very unforgiving. It's playoffs. There's no second chances here, no nothing. This is all or nothing. So if you have any pocket strats, we're always pulling them out here if you find yourselves in a matchup such as one like this one, especially against an opponent like St. Clair on the side of Cumberland. So right now, Cumberland has to try to lock in St. Clair, getting the plant down, I believe, though, on A very quickly, showing Cumberland, you know what, you do one thing. I'll do the next. We can just do the same stuff because now I want to see how fast you can retake. Brandon finding one, damaging another, but I don't think the trade is going to come in that quickly. Priestley now just kind of sitting by Van holding. He is going to be stunned. Three Cumberland players looking to come his way. He finds one. Brandon, I believe Nacho is going to find the second, able to get picked off from camp, but the trade should come through any second now. Priestley and KB, two of the hardest opponents in the collegiate scene to win a round against, especially in a 1v2 scenario it's going to be KB that end up finding the win there for St. Clair they take the SND game and they are going to move up 2-0 in the series yeah they're going to put themselves on match point to see the last kill coming up to KB here nice shots onto campus they're going to be going over to control one of Saints stronger game modes obviously it is a respawn type game mode which they excel so much at so it's going to be life or death now for Cumberland. They're going to look to take this one and extend the series, but our Saints, looking so, so strong, going to look to move on to Orlando and take the whole tournament home. Right, I mean, obviously, you know, they still got a control game to go, but we will get to that very shortly as we will take a short break as our Valorant series and our Rainbow Six has finished for tonight. So Saints Nation, we will see you in a few.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. Now back to potentially the last game needed for St. Clair to find their ticket, punch their ticket to Orlando for the NACE Finals. We'll see how it's going to go down. Certainly some <laughs> nerves probably for our Saints as they are so close to achieving such a wonderful feat, but we'll see how the rounds start out. It's a great start for Cumberland. They instantly cap the A side by KB. Gonna find three crucial picks to instantly stop the push of Cumberland from coming through. Obviously, this A side's a bit easier to take. This B side is by far the harder one to take. The Saints gonna have the insane respawn badge. Basically, for every kill the Saints get, Cumberland need to get a two to get this one to go their way. Basically, gonna find one. Brandon gonna get taken down, but no progress made here for the side of Cumberland. You can see a couple picks though coming out from Crayon. This could be the start they need to maybe get a tick on this side. Priestley doing his most to stay alive there, but will go down as Cumberland is getting off to a great start here. Should get at least a tick, but there comes a pick from the Saints. A couple come through as they should be able to find the retake here and they're gonna find the third. It's gonna be all up to Crayon here on this side. Will maybe be able to find a kill, but should get traded out. Still a great aggressive play here from Cumberland as they keep the aggressiveness going only red in the kill feed us they're just taking the saints down left and right brandon will find one pick but still the kills coming out from cumberland as they definitely have put on the aggression a double kill coming out from honor the second tick should come out here from them i don't think st Clair can get back in time to defend this one a couple more players gonna look to swing through but no that's gonna be all she wrote on the offensive end cumberland university gonna surprise us and take the first round home cumberland this is what you need to show if you want to compete here and take this series back. This could be the start of a mental swing and they are showing exactly why they came here to play, why they're here in the playoffs. I mean, I can't remember. I, I think I have seen the Saints uh, fold a control game once in a while, but again, usually it, uh, if a game goes to four series, it's usually because the S&D games get lost out here. So interesting to see Cumberland take a point off of the Saints. Maybe a little bit of some nerves, like I said, coming through our Saints here. They know they just need one more, so the pressure's got to be on them at least a little bit mentally. Just kind of get the job done. But Cumberland taking advantage of this so far. They find themselves up on the kill board just by just by one but nevertheless still contesting here and they're not letting the saints get away with anything and it looks like Nacho Slayer somehow has made his way all the way to B, but the challenges will come out. He's going to be able to find one. Kibi finds another one as well, but those kills from Cumberland are so, so dangerous. Honor, as Honor oh going to be on a five kill speed to start off this round. It seems like Saints are simply just getting outgunned all across the board as Brandon's going to fall down to Cal. It seems like Cumberland have turned it up a notch here. Nacho Slayer will find one to maybe start the push here, but Kibi is going to drop as well as it's way hard to catch this B site and every pick you get Cumberland doing a great, great job. They're going to be able to find one again. Crayon up in these buildings will halt the progress of the objective there. Saints struggling really, really hard here on both sides. Attack and defense. KB finally going to pick one up. But can the Saints get composure back and bring this one back? Would be a great, great round if they can win this one. Be a huge momentum swing, especially with well, how well Cumberland are playing. KB will be able to pick up one. Can Saints get onto this A side and stop the clock from taking Brandon? Going to pick up another other one the Saints finally gonna up. get some uh, control finally gonna get this eight side to go but honor doesn't want to go down that easily Brandon will go down KB finds a pick but with two ticks captain a you have to think the Saints are finally gonna be able to capture this one Right, I mean, they might be able to cap the site, but in terms of lives right now, it's going to be interesting. They buy themselves another minute 30 to try to get the life counter down, and it, honestly, with a minute 30 should be enough time for someone to either hit zero or for B to start getting capped. Yeah. So, regardless now, it is going to be kind of a race of lives that Cumberland is actually winning really well right now. They just kind of stay ahead always. They're playing so well on their trades, even going up by three. So, St. Clair right now, they're in a little bit of a hole, and yes, while they do have the cap down, they have a minute to work with, they need to start game planning about how they're going to be able to get these non-traded picks, but it's just not happening. Crayon with an absolutely beautiful hold there on the balcony, and he's going to find another Saint for his efforts.
Yeah, it looks like Saints just have no answer to Honor and Crayon up here on these high grounds. They are finding a kill here and there, but for this game mode, you need to find kills in succession without losing your own members. And it seems like Saints just can't seem to get that one going. It seems like Cumberland is able to find all the trades when needed here on the defensive end. KB does pick one up, drop down to 12 HP, though has to be careful. Camp will go back up on this high ground. KB, beautiful drop shot, showing a skill there. We'll find another one. Could that be the start that ignites it for the Saints? Brandon gonna have a crucial gunfight to win. Instead, sure. Gonna pick up, uh, can pick up one. Brandon has to be careful. Priestly gonna find another one. Now Saints find the picks, but finally Priestly drops. Can they find the trade out onto that member? It's gonna be a crucial one. No, Brandon will fall down as well. It's gonna be all on KB in this side. Priestly's gonna be able to find. Ensa, Ensa is gonna be able to find one. Does get taken down, and it's looking very good for the side of Cumberland. KB will find one more. Trying to do everything all on his lonesome. There's nobody from his team is there to support him. But five seconds and ticking. It looks like Cumberland gonna take the second round and put themselves on that point. Wow. I mean, absolutely incredible there from the side of Cumberland. They're showing up to win. I don't, you know, I'm, I'll be honest here, Theo. I've seen St. Clair lose a control, but I don't think I've ever seen them get put down 2-0. Me neither. Let alone 3-0 here. I mean, if Cumberland can get this sweep on control, if control really is their bread and butter, we could be looking at an interesting series here. Obviously, it is going to be the hard point that would come up next. So, again, a little bit of an interesting matchup there is they would need to try to, you know, take a hard point game off of St. Clair, which is probably the hardest thing to do. I don't think a single team's even really done that all season. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that later, but I don't Maybe believe that stat even exists right now because I'm pretty sure St. Clair are undefeated on hard point. But what I will say is, if, you, if there's ever going to be a team to do it, I'm confident that it would be Cumberland because no other team, to me, has contested St. Clair as much as Cumberland has. They took them to a somewhat of an okay game on SND, but they started to make progress on Hardpoint that no one else had ever seen. Right now, sure, the Saints are doing really, really good, but even if they take this point, they're still behind and down on match point. They have a lot to work for right now if they want to get to Orlando within three. And attacking is definitely the harder side in this game. It looks like Saints have finally turned it up a notch, and it's all green in the kill feed. Nacho Slayer doesn't want to go down without a fight. Five in a row for him now. Saints are looking to get the momentum back in their favor. Brandon, beautiful long green shot as it seems like Saints finally have found their composure and are finding all the kills. Up eight kills here in this round. Crayon will find one to Brandon. They have two picks captured by Cumberland. So Saints don't really care about that eight point too much, but if they're able to find the picks here and there, it's going to be beautiful for them. Not they're going to find one. Almost finding the second there. Will be able to find it. Camp going to find a double kill as well there. As this nice hero plays from both coming out here. Nacho Sayo now has the kill streak as well. Is on a seven streak just can't be stopped right now camp in a beautiful position up here gonna be looking over his team and priestly does fall not just say i won't be able to find that one camp picks it up as that should be the a point going over to cumberland university but now they're only gonna have a minute 30 nice double kill almost coming out from brandon but as i said a minute 30 to capture his b side should be held by the saints but we saw this last time cumberland really turned it up a notch and we're able to take this one home right i mean again cumberland you know not looking as strong this round but they're still kind of playing around here. Yes, down five. So again, St. Clair most likely going to be able to take this one out. Okay. But they did cap A. And I mean, if they can just try to man a little bit of a contest onto B here, they could necessarily just do it off of point control. They're bringing it back very slowly, but surely. Yes, oh, down by four. Oh. The melee is not going to go through on the side of St. Clair. Uh -oh. And now it's going to be Honor and uh -oh. Cal to pick off another one. Like They've it. made the difference in lives back again. Now it is going to be Priestley who separates it back to two. Yeah, but now the Ensa are going to find a crucial pick on to Honor. Their camp, though, on an eight streak inside this heart, uh, this objective. Finally, he's going to get taken down. The Saints playing with fire there. Do give up a tick. You saw how well Cumberland took the objective and then just held down the long sidelines for the Saints respawn but thankfully for the Saints they're able to win this one you can see Cumberland definitely playing this very very well Saints not expecting this high level of gameplay coming out from Cumberland but with 35 seconds left this could be the round going into the Saints and they could mentally refocus for that attacking round still gonna be very very hard to win this map but with shots like that it's gonna make it a lot easier Priestly beautiful pick onto camp there every one for one trade is definitely worth it for the Saints KB crucial pick onto Crayon there that might be the end of the round KB will go down but you can see how far back the Saints are pushing the Cumberland players as they only have six lives remaining in nine seconds they're gonna need to do God's 
work here. It's going to be practically impossible to cap this one. Is I don't even think anyone's going to be able to get onto the objective. That's going to be the round going over towards uh, the Saints. The touch doesn't come through. They're down to one, and now it's going to be the most difficult round so far on the attack. Well, I mean... I won't lie, Theo. I'm going to get so hyped right now. If the Saints can pull off a reverse sweep in control they in could. order to win their way into Orlando. Yes, I know they're up by two games right now. But again, you never want to start giving up momentum to anyone, especially a team like Cumberland, who so far have like far exceeded my expectations yeah. for what I thought they were going to do on this control game, at least, just because of our Saints being so uh, noteworthy, like good on these respawn game modes. But... Cumberland showing up to play control definitely their strongest game mode as I would say to start out here from what I've seen from them obviously not too much Nacho and Brandon gonna let up the kill board first but Cal with a double of his own gets picked off and traded back from KB and Saints blitz the A objective instantly yeah. capture that one but Brandon going down here to Crayon is so so crucial if Crayon can just stay alive here and spend like 10-15 seconds of these Saints members staying alive that will be crucial KB will finally pick that one up we can see far, how far away from the objective they are Priestley on a giga flank here beautiful position from him can definitely can find some shots in the back here and start the objective for the Saints he's gonna have to be the playmaker for the Saints here Priestley will be able to pick up one that should open up a little flank for and uh, to make his way onto the side Brandon does fall but still all green in the kill feed as the first tick should be coming through on this B side Priestley getting in that pre prime position will pick up a tick for the Saints here and say finding another one and it's only Priestley on the site Saints need to come here to help him out the tick comes through finally as Brandon's gonna get up here in a great great position Saw one jump across, will jump right behind him, will look for the shots there. Doesn't have the good target priority there, will actually fall down to Ooh. Cal. Beautiful shots from Cal as he single-handedly holds that side down for the side of Cumberland, but still, gonna be a lot of work needed for them to bring this map back. Right, I mean, St. Clair, you know, they almost get that second tick, but it is almost. going to be disabled by Cumberland. A really good job there to find their own control in that right. And now, St. Clair, you know, it seems like their play was definitely on just getting the quick uh, two points and then going to match point there for the best of th uh, five there for, uh, for the control. 2-2. Two, two. But what I will say is that so far, Cumberland, again, you got to kind of play it slow now. You have the disadvantage on lives, and with just barely under a minute of time to work with, you don't have a lot of time to kind of get going. You need to find the difference right now, and it might mean that you have to start doing some risky plays. It is going to be the peak that Camp will do and get from Priestley, but KB is going to find one through the wall to trade back out. Brandon with one. Can he get the second? No, not quite. But the trade does come through from KB. But still, the kills coming out on the side of Cumberland are crucial. KB will be in this side. Try to find something. Pulls out the pistol. Finds one. Almost finds a second. Yes, he does with a pistol. Now on 1 HP. Has the SMG in that corner. Priestley comes to help him out. It's going to be just Cal in the 1v1. Picks up KB. That's a crucial kill there. As Nacho Slayer uses the... Oh, uh, the... Fred Missile, Fred, Fred Missile, Missile picks up the kill. The second tick does come through for the Saints. So they're gonna have 43 seconds and probably one or two final pushes here to take the map. Uh, Brandon will be able to pick one up. KB on this flank, but Priestley and Nacho wow. gonna find on the kills. It's gonna be just Camp left on. No, it's gonna be just Crayon left on this side. 1v4 has to play for his life if he drops. That's gonna be the end of the map here, but Saints on the side. He's gonna rush in here. We'll go down. That's gonna be the round taken by the Saints as they tie it up at 2-2 and put themselves on match point here. Not only match point, but series point, Orlando point, Saints. You're getting so close here. The reverse sweep isn't a possibility. You've had to win two in a row with your backs turned against the wall, but so far you've done it. One final round to decide whether the Saints can move on to Orlando right here, right now. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We switch go. sides. It's going to be a barn burner. And if Saints are able to get the defensive side here, it doesn't look like they will be. They're actually going to be on the attack yet again. The last round was a complete coin flip, I believe, for who gets the attacking side. So Cumberland and to start it off, we'll have the advantage in his fifth and final round. But we just saw our Saints take home the attacking round. Let's see if they can make it two in a row to put themselves in a position to win the whole tournament. They're going to be getting off to that A start yet again. Going to get a tick right away. All four members on down. Two ticks immediately? Instantly. And oh my goodness. What? <laughs> going to find all four <laughs> with his kill streak. Oh my goodness. I don't think Saints had any idea that he had that one in the bag. And they definitely didn't take that one in to consider going for that push. But that's going to be a great start for Cumberland. Beautiful swing though from Nacho Slayer. That's going to restart the attack here for the Saints. But already a minute gone from the clock. That one Red Missile could be all that matters in this round. 
Right, I mean, you never know, but it's just so tough. Going down four like that right away, like, are you kidding me? That was such a well thought out plan there from Cumberland. And I mean, as picks start flying off the board, St. Clair have immediately made back oh, the kill deep. advantage. We do see now 25 to 23, and it seems like they're just now trying to oh, capture B, big. trying to get that control. The long angle will come in from camp. Can he be cleared out? Yes, Brandon able to do that. Can't find the second one though, as he will get cut down by Cal and now Crayon dancing around this A site again. The Saints so close to capping it. They're two and a half points away, but they can't quite stay there. Nacho though, able to find two, can't find the third on the, on the elevation angle. And now oh, Cumberland able to kind of fight back and get that kill differential back to four lives. 22 seconds left, Theo. Yeah, I don't think the kills are going to matter too much. The Saints make their way over on this piece like KB. Let's go massive, but doesn't find anyone on the crossfire. And that's, that's dangerous for the Saints. Not just like going to find one, but down, down goes, he goes. Priestley going look for the picks with the pistol, as it looks like Cumberland are going to be the one locking this one down. 18 seconds and counting, 14 lives. Saints just falling apart here, and I think that Pred Missile could be the reason for this disaster, as KB does get meleeed out. And Natural say is going to pick up Cal, but with five seconds left, they're going to get a bit of contest here. Onto this B-side is now they need to be most clutch than ever. They're going to find a pick onto Brandon Cumberland Will, but Saints need to be perfect here to take this one and have to stay on the point. They get off there for half a second. Natural say going to find a pick onto Cal here as Saints look to regroup inside of this B-side. They're finding all the picks. It's going to be all up to one member, 1v1 here. Natural say picks that one. No, nobody from the side of Cumberland, anyone near this B-side. Secure the A-point. Secure A-point on the flip side, and now they're going to find a second take on this B-side. Only nine left, nine lives left though, so they have to play well in the clutch here. The second tick doesn't come through here. Nacho say gonna look to stay alive. A weird decision from him. I would like to see him on the point there. But 50 seconds, Saints can kind of breathe a little bit, breathe a sigh of relief, but only six lives left to take the B objective. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, they made the time back up, but lives will most likely be the undoing of them. It seems that we are probably, barring an absolute miracle, I mean, going to be headed to another hard point game. But don't let me talk too soon right now. Saints with the first two on the board. 6-12, to 12, 30 seconds left to go. Crayon needs to try to stay alive and hopefully find a pick here. Again, 12-6, to 6, you don't want to give anything up. And now the Saints giving up two will have no respawns. 10-4, to 4, Saints, every life matters. KB has to try to find a pick behind this guy. I don't know if he saw the one on the bus, but it is going to be his undoing. Nacho with another one, but he should be traded back out very shortly. He has to make the extension. 10 seconds left, 9-2. to two. It's never going to happen. We are moving on to a game four as Cumberland take an absolute shocker and win this control. What a map there from Cumberland. They win a couple of rounds early. Saints try and make it back, but Cumberland get the defensive side, which is the strongest side, and that Predator missile was absolutely massive. Kind of... They would have lost that A side 100% if not for that one, but the fact that he 100%. killed all four with that one instantly put a spear through the Saints' hearts as we're going to be going to a map for it. As you said, it is going to be hard point. It is going to be Saints' strongest game mode, so they should, in theory, still be able to close it out, but it's going to be Cumberland with all the momentum to work with now. Right, and I mean, we'll be getting to that very shortly. Again, guys, this has been one crazy series. Cumberland showing us that they do compete here and that they have taken a game off of the Saints, something that I haven't seen personally in a pretty long time for COD. I have seen it before in the season, but again, quite the rarity. And we'll get back to you with some more rarities, hopefully, from our COD team coming to you soon on this next hard point match. Be there in a second, Saints. Peace out.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. It is going to be St. Clair up 16 zip right now in the first hard, oh, sorry, the second hard point game. Picks coming through, kill board going all red. Again, this for St. Clair to punch their ticket to Orlando and go to Disneyland. So hopefully we'll see if they can make it happen. But right now, Cumberland trying to not let it happen that way. They want to claw themselves back into this game, staring down match point. They want to bring it to a game five. Priestley and company looking not to let that happen. He picks up one on the board. And a second one, double for KB, as they try to keep stalling. And it looks like KB is going to be repping the SMG this map. He's been using that AR for the whole series, but definitely seen something in Cumberland's gameplay that makes him want to whip out the SMG. Now on a five streak to start it off, you're going to look to pick up that Hellstorm missile early on and say, oh, it's going to go down. Saints having good spawns here, though. Priestley will find one. He will fall down as well, though, as now. It's actually Cumberland who somehow has switched the spawns. KB, though, on a seven streak here, looking for the eighth. Won't be able to find it, but I think that's going to be a kill streak coming out for him, which could be so game swinging as we saw it on last map. Could even use it here. No, we'll decide not to. Saints will go for a dry retake, but Cumberland, you got a very great job. They will might be able to take the lead here, even on this hard point. Of Saints having a very, very tough time walking through such good suppressive fire from Cumberland. Yes, they will find all the kills here. They will take the lead here as Saints struggling to even pick up one. One pick on that on that retake. Cumberland looking so good. You know, you think just when the Saints have a big lead, nope, right back at you. Cumberland, it's punch counter punch with these guys, and they have been on fire for the last 30 minutes, obviously, on the on this matchup in the series. St. Clair, though, looking to end things off. It is going to be KB who has been putting this team on his back so far for this hard point game. If you look at the kill board right now, Nacho getting involved, hopefully a little more. As we see, he's off to kind of a slow start, not very typical of him. But again, not a better player who I would think would claw himself back out of this hole that he's put himself in. So St. Clair with the lead once again, now retaking, have done a great job. Cumberland looking to kind of keep things close. Close. Nacho and Brandon getting traded out but finding their own respectfully and now Brandon off the survival of that last trade oh, will be able to try to take advantage team kill coming out here from Cumberland and now Honor adds another one before he's traded out by KB. It's a great third hard point for the Saints you could see all the picks there not just on Brandon we're just able to set up on the point and hold that one down for the Saints crown's gonna find one KB finds the trade gets his 11th kill of the round Priestley gonna find Caswell oh, Priestley gonna go down though to camp as it's going to be Cumberland with control of the point but Saints going to look to retake this one quickly Killstreak doesn't find anything from KB Brandon's going to actually uh, find a pick then KB gets traded out but Brandon and Slayer finding two of their own now it's a five streak for Brandon a couple of kills away from his own Hell of Predator missile and Slayer's going to find one to Honor as St. Clair doing a great job here and Slayer will go down on that point so time will not be taken but finally someone gets right back on top of that one but Priestley will fall KB has to be careful he does have the SMG not the AR, so he's going to choose to back up and say he's going to find one. You can see Brandon playing very slowly, trying to get that kill streak. He knows how crucial that could be. He's going to find the trade on to KB. One kill away, I believe, from that one. Now on a six streak, as Saints going to retake the hard point, put themselves probably at 100 points. It looks like Cumberland are fully giving up this point. Well, yeah, I mean, right now, St. Clair College, they have the lead that they want. Again, we'll see how Cumberland counter punches, but so far, things looking all green for the way of our boys in green and yellow. So now we will see how they can take this, oh, how they can dies. keep running with it. Hard point now, switching up on Main Street, and now we will see who kind of gets to it first. Looks like by the looks of it, it will be the Saints, but never mind, I spoke maybe a little bit too soon. The double kill comes in on the side of Cumberland and they take first control for just a second before our Saints find fighting back finding three of their own using second. the pistols though and m the numbers advantage Saints are gonna get on the side not just just only job is to stay alive behind that pillar and let his teammates do all the work but KB gonna find Priestley there not what you want to see look at Nacho say though on one HP tippetoeing around this corner won't be able to find it on the point this crown's gonna pick that one up but KB gonna find a couple does get taken down Priestley finds the it's gonna be all four falling for Cumberland. It should be Saints picking up this garbage time as the rotations are gonna come through. Brandon in such a prime position here actually does have that kill streak, so it's six kills to get at that one. That one's gonna be huge in the future. Let's see if he can find a couple entry ones for the side of the Saints. He's gonna be on the objective early. Honor and Cal gonna fi uh, find some trades in the. 
in the kill feed there's Brandon gonna go around the corner picks up crayon it's like KB gonna find Woo! a couple of bullet saints finally beginning to blow this one open trying to punch their ticket to Orlando Brandon swinging through will find one more KB does fall but Priest is gonna pick up crayon Nacho Seiya will find the trade on to Kala Saints are completely running away with this one camp will pick up one but on 20 HP can't really repeat anything we'll try and get on the point but does get taken down 3 of 15 a rough map for camp and so far but Saints are just stomping this one away so far having a great great map Cal gonna try and stop this objective from coming through we'll get it for just a second but Saints up nearly 100 points definitely running away with this hard point and right now, you can tell that St. Clair can smell it. They can smell that Orlando air. KB finding two from the truck bed. Now Nacho swinging onto one, finds him, finds the other on the 180 flick as well. Nacho, you are absolutely disgusting. St. Clair have the control now, and they will start slowly ticking away. One of the hardest hardpoint teams to come back from. Cumberland has a tall glass of water to down before they can even start thinking about bringing this to a game five. And I think Brandon has that. Uh, he had another team kill from Priestley <laughs> comes out the trophy system not his, not his fault there but we'll get a couple for his troubles we'll look for the third Priestly won't be able to find it KB will help him out there Honor finds it but KB yet again helping out his teammate will find a couple now in a 5 spree from KB gonna be a 1 kill away from his own kill streak can he find that one would be crucial if he can pick that one up let's see how Cumberland decides to push the attack here Saints now at 186 and counting Brandon will fall down but Cumberland having a hard time pushing through here as KB is gonna be able to find that six should be able to have that kill streak online and Priest is gonna be able to find one does get traded out but it looks like Saints are rotating four next they're kind of willing to leave KB here in the dust who will fall down but with 70 points and 180 to the side of St. Clair this map is looking very good for the Saints and right now you can just tell 187 Cumberland they have to do everything in their power to try to keep this hard point contested now can St. Clair try to find some chip points on it no not quite it is going to be held so far by Cumberland, the contest comes through, but the cleanup from camp will be the undoing of the player. And now the kill feed lighting up all red as Cumberland try to claw and scratch their way back into this matchup. Down 100 points still, such a long way to go, but it is doable. We have seen crazier things work. Now the re-engagement on the assault. KB leading the charge, has to try to find a first pick. Second one coming in from Brandon, third for Priestley, oh, a is. fourth from Priestley. And now, or St. Clair, they have the team wipe. They can gain these points and they should be able to cross the 200 mark. Contest does come through. The player stunned out though, and it should be the re-engagement from KB. Another one too before he gets traded out to find the control. But it is going to be Cumberland who crossed the 100 mark. Brandon with one, Priestley with a headshot onto Crayon, and now they can try to start fighting for this third hard point now. And they take it so far on Van. They cross the 200 point mark, and now they are within 50 of going to Orlando. Yeah, they're getting very close here. Honor though, gonna find a huge one, one kill onto Nostro Slay up. But Saints doing a good job of staying on the site, but finally looks like Cumberland will be able to take over the good trades forward and back from both teams KB on the side on his lonesome will look to just stay alive here and get some backup from his team Priestley is gonna find one KB is gonna go down finally as three members from Cumberland shooting at him trades left and right from both teams but it looks like both teams finding picks everywhere no one really able to get an advantage as everybody's finding kills doesn't look like the game will end on this hard point just yet as Saints could look to give up here but they're gonna get these garbage time seconds as Cumberland are forced to contest it here camp will pick up one on the side will go down Saints should be able to get these last few seconds when those actually gonna be Cumberland picking this one up but this gives Saints the time to rotate over to the next hard point and look to close it out on the next one well you gotta think maybe one of the last hard points that we'll ever see so far from the Saints CA channel we will see how it ends up Priestley finding one trading back his buddy the pride missile from KB picks up two three down right now and now St. Clair can just kind of sit and force a couple of trades to come out KB with yet another one absolutely disgusting 32 and 16 have a day young man yeah, KB coming into his true form here in this fourth map, absolutely demolishing the opposition of Saints, putting them so, so close to taking this uh, map. And Nacho Slay and KB going to be the last two alive as a couple members from the Saints did drop. Nice spot here from Nacho Slay, 25 points away. Now KB does drop, so the retake from Cumberland will more than likely be successful. But Nacho Slay going to find a oh, couple of He's going to find a third to help him out. Of Saints could close the map out right here. It's all into honor. He's going to fall down. Saints, 20 seconds left. Won't be able to finish the map out just yet, but could put themselves within five 
five points as they look to do so. Nice shots there from Brampton. You could see Priestley and KB setting up in the oh middle for God. the next objective as they're five seconds away, six seconds from taking this one. Nacho say gonna take that one down. 244 and count. They have the, the control! Same. They have the control in the middle of the map. It's gonna be all up to camp here. Who's Get gonna it to it? And they're gonna be able to take it. Saints take the series 3 1. Is they gonna be moving on to Orlando? They are often known as one of the best collegiate teams in North America, never not living up to that distinction. St. Clair College Varsity Cod going to Orlando. They punch their ticket through. Brandon, KB, Priestley, Nacho, hell, the coach, Zarin, say hi to that mouse for me down in Orlando. Enjoy your time down there, guys. You completely deserve it. Without a doubt, that was an amazing series from both sides. Cumberland definitely putting up a very, very strong fight, but our Saints showing why they are so dominant on this hard point game. What are going to be taking a home 3-1 advantage, but I think that's going to be it for us today. Let's have a quick recap of what happened today. Right, and I mean, uh, again, such an amazing day, but, you know, we had to say uh, goodbye to our R6 Collegiate. Obviously, they did not win versus Butler going down 0-2 in the series, so Butler will move on to the uh, semis, I believe, yeah. now for R6. And uh, then, as well, we got to talk about Valorant. Again, the guys able to get it done in dominant fashion versus the University of Missouri, so great stuff there from Valorant. But the talk of the town right now is that St. Clair College uh, sorry, Varsity Cod are going to Orlando. They're going to be there for the NACE Finals, and I cannot wait to watch them hopefully come on top with the trophy and the title. Without a doubt, a couple of our Saints team have some very, very good chances of winning these NACE trophies. I think our Valorant team uh, is also a favorite to win. Our Cod team probably a favorite to win as well, I would say now. So uh, very, very happy for our teams able to make it to land. You know, it's such a fun experience as a player, as a coach, just to even experience just the land. But winning the tournament all in all would just be great for the players, the coaches, and for the organization. You know, Saints growing so, so fast, so quickly, becoming the most dominant in Canada and trying to take over North America. I mean, there's not much to be said there. That was a brilliant stream. Shout out to everyone in the back room, obviously. I can't, you know, the names, there's so many of you guys today. Um, I believe it was Matthias, TJ, uh, Ari, I believe, uh, Dan, apologies if there are any others, I believe uh, Phil and Rare as well, who are, uh, oh, Daniil, obviously, how could I forget <laughs> my beautiful director, Daniil, and, uh, you know, shout out to you guys in the back room for doing your jobs, shout out to our sponsors in Subway, Tim Hortons, HyperX, uh, the SRC, and the SEC alumni, we could not do any of this if it were not for you guys, so shout out to sponsoring us there, shout out to the fans for watching at home, all of you guys, you know, we come here to do what we do to entertain you guys at home so wonderful job from I believe you and me Theo that was a great stream and thank you for all for tuning in tomorrow I believe we have some League, League of, of Legends. Legends and Omega Strikers happening tomorrow but tonight is a night for the COD team to celebrate as they punch their ticket to Orlando it's been me Patrick Smoke Chambers casting alongside Theo the Holy Juan yep. and we will see you later